next year and maybe minus Draymond. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that the tattoo on that dude's head? Yeah, yeah. Red, was that the red, guy that sitting weird. next to Young Gravy? Yeah. Uh, young who? <laughs> who? <laughs> what was the guy's name? There's a musician uh, named, named what? Young Gravy. Gravy is yeah. in like yeah, the gravy stuff you pour on your turkey and gravy. on yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, young gravy. Yeah, look him up. Yeah, he was a, he was a white I'd guy. I have like curly rappers. Hair. Hold on, hold on. Hold yeah, look on. Up, let's just it. let's just let's just stop for a second. Let's just take a. <laughs> we need a timeout. Have rappers run out of good names that we're down to the point now where there's a rapper named Young Gravy? The Cash In weeknights at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Sports Map Radio. First name sports with Greg Frank. I don't believe that the lottery is rigged. I like to trust that the integrity of something as important as who drafts number one overall in your league is held up. But what is the problem with just showing the whole thing on national TV? This is why people say draft lotteries are rigged. Shut them up by saying, no, it's not. You can watch this. What is the harm of televising the actual lottery? First name sports weekday afternoons from two to four Eastern. Just saying it with Cole Thompson. When you look at Gatorade, Powerade, and Kool-Aid, great drinks, absolutely phenomenal drinks for you to have in life. Do you list them off by color or do you list them off by flavor? It's not flavor. I don't know where the society came from to where blue raspberry is a flavor. No, it's blue. It's just blue. Oh, I love that Gracious Freeze Gatorade. No, it's light blue Gatorade. That's all it is. Oh, that lemon lime power. It's yellow. It is yellow. I don't know why we've gone down the rabbit hole of trying to come up with flavors. They're colors. Your go-to Kool-Aid, mine personally, red. It's not cherry. It's not fruit punch. It's red. And sorry, I don't know where people finally came up with this notion of, oh, Powerade has flavors or Gatorade has flavors. They have colors. You pick your color and you stick with it for the rest of your life. Just saying it. Weekdays from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. Sports Kings with Mean Gene. I got an email yesterday, and they said, Mean Gene, we love your show. Sports Kings is all good, but you guys are not talking hockey, okay? And I replied back, okay, well, I don't know if you realize or not, but we are black, and we we don't know a lot about hockey, okay? I'm sorry. We're trying our best. We get you some scores, but every day if we're going to sit up here and talk about something we don't know about. Sports Kings, weekday afternoons from 4 to 6 Eastern. This is Brian Mossberger, and you've got the best of both worlds. v programming on the Sports Map Radio Network. This is Live Bet Saturday on v the Sports Betting Network. BetMGM, the king of sports books, unleashes the spirit of Las Vegas. BetMGM Rewards. Every time you make a wager at BetMGM, you can earn BetMGM Rewards points that you can redeem for online bonus credits like bonus bets and bet insurance tokens. And if you're planning a trip to Vegas, you can convert those points into MGM Rewards points that you can use towards dining shows and more at over 20 resort properties located on the Strip. Sign up with BetMGM or log on today to get an even bigger piece of the action. Eligibility restrictions apply. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly. Visit BetMGM for terms. Got to be 21. New and existing customer offer. All promotions subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued at nominal drawable bonus bets, which expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem. 1-800-GAMBLER is the number. I'm looking forward to what they got planned for the uh, the next four hours of Live Bet Saturday because uh, Ben Wilson, Benny and the Bets, just walked in here dressed to the nines, head to toe. Like, we got to get a video monitor up for so that the camera can get the full shot, man. I like the shoes. I'm a fan of uh, shoes that uh, that come. Ex- exactly. He's, match- he's matching the belt. I thought he had a hot day later Step or in something. front of the camera. Step in front yeah, of the camera. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. There you go. go. Yeah, you just walk right in front. Just That's just fine. Walk in front, yeah, man. Yeah, we're we're fine. doing just TV walk. here. Look at there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's eat- Okay. Now you ruined it with the barbecue yeah. lace. What do you mean ruined it? Those are the best flavor of lace. Ruined. He ruined the shot, though. Come on. He's That's supposed to be a classy guy. You can't be eating barbecue chips. Better calm down. Yeah, there right. go. Brian Ortega's <laughs> freaking out right now. Like, this has never happened before in any show ever. Uh, like, oh, my God. No, it's okay. It's all right. By the way, <laughs> it, Ben, quiet full of rage. Ooh. Danny Burke and I, the chicken hawks. Just out of the chicken hawks? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what, Sounds right. First off, to reiterate for our audience, we've drafted um, players in the Vegas Golden Knights and Florida Panthers game one Stanley Cup final matchup. Uh, anytime goal scorer. 
we anytime have, goal scorer. Yep, yeah. anytime goal scorer. And it adds passion. 40 bucks each goal. Yes. Okay, so with that, the teams are Brian Ortega. All right, so JVT's team is the Chicken Hawks. The Chicken Hawks. Thank you. Which is JVT and Danny Burke. Jonathan Marshall. Marshall Show. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Kachuk. Okay. Carter. For Hagee. Yep. Uh, William Carlson. Yep. Got that one. And Sam Reinhardt. Yes, there you go. And that is JBT. Well, Kelly and last, second cha- last second name change, Brian. Okay. We're not going to be the, we're not the Viper Hawks anymore. We're the Wind Hawks. Wind Hawks. The Wind Hawks. The Vegas Golden Knights. No, that's wrong. Nope. It's immediately wrong, isn't it? Yeah, Jack Eichel. Sorry, Jack Eichel. I apologize. I, I flipped those. This is going really well. Jack Eichel. Mark Stone. Good thing you said it, though, because Ortega was going to pronounce it Eichel. Yep. Alexander. Barkov. Bar- Barkov, thank you. <laughs> Sam Bennett. That's like one of the easier ones. And Riley Smith. You got it. You got it. Those five. Play-by-play master Ben Wilson is seething right now. Like, Come on. That's like the easiest one out there. <laughs> In his fancy <laughs> shoes. Really good. Fancy belt. Why All right, so cool. Angry? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. You see? It's a good <laughs> bit, right? It's really good. <laughs> Storming out of the studio. Right, right now he's going. There's like a little, for those who don't know, there's like a little soundproof area between two doors. <laughs> I'm mean, sure Ben's going in there like scream like at the top of his lungs. You mean Brady Cannon's office? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed to say that name? RFP. Uh, he's not gone. He's just not with the network anymore. Uh, all right. So with that, baseball. Please stand by for a special presentation of Western Reserve Radio at westernreserveradio.com on the Live 365 Network and the Live 365 app. We welcome you to Garfield Stadium here in Lakewood, Ohio. It's Western Reserve Radio. The iMedia One Network is proud to bring to you Cleveland Cobras football here again on the iMedia One Network. Network here this year. We have also Western Reserve Radio 2 and City Sports Cast. You can game on any one of those. As well as Facebook at Western Reserve Radio. And go to the Cleveland Cobras Facebook page. Also, this is Jim Craven with you along with the coach, Bob Gessler. Jared Vicourt joining us, making his transition from the ice to the gridiron. Dave Ferris pushing all the buttons, keeping us on the air. As we get ready for week one of the Tri-Point Football League. Here are the Cobras hosting the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders out of the Youngstown area. This will be the second game of the season for both teams. The Cleveland Cobras took on the Leviathan two weeks ago in Canton. They get the 20-3 win. However, that, game, that win not coming Easily, they go scoreless for three quarters. Fourth quarter action. Cobras take over, and they get, again, the 20-3 win for the Rough Riders. They took the loss to the Outlaws last week by a score of 26-6. And for the Cobras, again, coming off a 4-5 and five season in 2022, their, their season ended with a playoff loss to the Ohio Bears here in Lakewood, again, with the West Virginia Leviathan. A little bit of a test there. But unofficially, their stats look like this. Uh, Dave, jo- or, excuse me, Dave Thompson, the quarterback for the Cobras, was not available. Two weeks ago, they went with Deion Red Carter and T.J. Johnson. They combined to go 9 of 21 for 123 yards, a touchdown, and one interception. On the ground for the Cobras, it would be T.J. Johnson leading the rushing with six carries, 52 yards. Team-wise, they would go 19 carries for 79 yards and one touchdown in the receiving department. It was Antonio Boyd. He would have three catches for 56 yards. He would have the sole touchdown through the air total. Again, nine for 123. Average about 13.7 yards per completion. So that was an up look for the Cobras. Defensively, Bobby Eccles, he gets two sacks. And then they get a sack fest from everybody. Devere Glenn, Chris Frazier, Jeremiah Grayson, Matt Federer, and Jacoby Brown all out of sack. Eric Bankhead picked off one and went 40 yards for the Cobra touchdown. Coach, week one, you expect mistakes. You expect things, people to get to be a little bit nervous. 
you got to work through that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is the timing now. You know, you, you can only do so much at practice. So your timing now is, you know, you're playing a real game. It's a preview, but you're still playing a real game, and you're trying to get your timings down with your blocking, your passing. Same way with defense. Same, same exact thing. You're trying to get your time, your feel for your people. Um, and, I, and I think that uh, when I was there and I saw the, the team that they played, they looked like a very young football team. Um, but, again, you, you have to produce – so maybe the Cobras, it took them a while to get going, but then in the fourth quarter, a latter part of the game, they really started connecting, and things they were starting to put things together. Now, only four starters <laughs> returning on offense, four at Cleveland, three on defense. Jared, having been on a run with the 2023 Clark Cup champions, and we love to say that, the Youngstown Phantoms. Absolutely. Every year we see a turnover in rosters. It takes time to really kind of gel. We saw that in the beginning of the Phantoms year, and that's something we're going to see probably with the Cobras and most of the teams that are coming up here in 2023. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. The Cobras are very young, very skilled football team, and they're going to have to learn to gel and have great chemistry on the football field to get back where they were a year ago in the playoffs. Again, Cobras coming in at 1-0, and zero, Rough Riders at 0-1. and one. Looks like we might start a couple minutes early here, so we'll take a look at the starters for the Cleveland Cobras. We did not get the starters for the Rough Riders, so we do apologize for that. But offensively, for the Cobras up front, it's going to be Brandon Antall, Kayshawn Jones, Antoine Peterson, Lamoris Dillard, and EJ Bibbs for the Cobras. Keep an eye on EJ Bibbs. He is going to be a big part of that offensive line. The wide receiving core is going to be Eddie Bing Edwards, Antonio Boyd, D'Angelo Thompson, and Daryl Golson. The tight end will be Abe Taylor. The running back will be the Cobra veteran, Emmett Calhoun. And the quarterback will be the veteran, Dave Slap Thompson. He missed the preview game in Canton. However, he is here tonight and ready to go. Defensively, for the Cobras, it'll be Andy Cote and Jeremiah Grayson at the defensive tackles. Robert Littlejohn and Devere Glenn at the ends. Devere Glenn making his way from Inglewood, California, the former Duck, now a Cleveland Cobra. The linebackers will be Dontrell Nalling, Marquise Hodges, Jacoby Brown, and Brandon Fleming. The corners will be Kev Fortson and Cam McCauley. And the strong safety will be... Terrell Lively as we get ready to get this one started here in Lakewood. Cobras will be going left to right on your dial or your device. And they're going to be in the all black with the neon green letter, and excuse me, numbers and the black helmets. The Rough Riders will be in all white with the black helmets. As we get the signal for play. Rough Riders now kicking off. Cobras will receive that ball, go down to the 20-yard line. It'll be picked up and brought to the near side. Again, moving left to right. Cobras out past the 35, 40, 45, 50, and into Rough Rider territory. And that's going to be a huge return by Willie James, the wide receiver. And the Cobras will take over in great field position, Coach. Outstanding job. I'll tell you what, they set the wall to the inside. He got to the outside, and he had a nice wall going there, and then it was just the last person was able to just bump him outside. So that was an outstanding job by their special teams. Quick starts is what they're looking for, Jared, and that's really the way you do it. Yeah, they're in great field position and great on their first drive of the game and looking to score here early, keep their gas on the offensive pedal. Cobras, again, are only returning four starters on offense, three on defense. Dave Thompson working in the offseason. He'll move a little bit more tonight. He got into some better shape over the offseason. Now it will be a four-wide receiver set for the Cobras. Thompson will have Calhoun to his right. Eddie Johnson will be the receiver to the near side. Be a tight receiver to the right side, almost a wing. That will be D'Angelo Thompson. Hand off to Calhoun, trying to work to the outside. He'll cut back in. He'll be wrapped up after about a half a yard gain. They're not even going to give him that much, so it'll be second and ten for the Cobras. L little pit bat as far as uh, running the ball. He, he's got to make a choice. He, he, I think he could have made it to the outside if he had kept going outside. His blocker was there. He was plussing him out, but that's okay because he had him off balance. But he tried cutting in, and linebacker scraped. And that's one thing the Cobras are going to have to work on offensively tonight against the Rough Riders. As we stated earlier, only 79 rushing yards in their preview game, looking to get the ball moving on the ground here. Thompson now again in the shotgun. Four wide receiver set to be Antonio Boyd to the far side. Second and 10 now from the 43-yard line. Thompson with the long pass downfield. 
He had D'Angelo Thompson wide open, overthrew him, and it's going to bring up third down and about nine and a half for the Cobras. Well, what happened on that when the corner was there, and I think he was expecting the safety to come over and give him a little help, so he kind of bailed off on it, um, and he had him by five yards. He just overthrew. Great pattern, uh, but just didn't get it done. So we'll just call it third and ten from the 43-yard line. Cooler up here than it was in Youngstown when we left. 91 degrees when we got up there. 72 when we pulled into the parking lot here. A little bit of a breeze. Shouldn't affect the game much, but definitely a temperature change here. As, uh, we were kind of worried there. We weren't all black tonight here for the, <laughs> meaning the Cobras. As Thompson now again in the shotgun. Four wide receiver set. It'll be now Boyd to the receiver to the near side. Thompson with a strong count. He's going to get the marker. He was looking again downfield. But it's going to be an encroachment. On the Rough Riders, so that's going to give the Cobras five, and it's going to help a little bit. It's going to open up the playbook. I'm, I'm looking right straight Domus down the line, and their left tackle, Dillard, he needs to, I believe that's who it is, uh, he needs to move up. Um, I didn't get, I think that was the, the number on that left side. He's lining way back into the backfield, and he's going to have to make that adjustment. The line coach has got to have him move up, or they're going to get him for in the backfield. If Third. I'm not, not mistaken, I think the Rough Riders, number 80, George Freeman, committed that encroachment there. Third and five now for the Cobras. Be at the 38-yard line. 13-18 left here, first quarter, just underway here in Lakewood. Thompson now waiting for the snap. Got to be Golson, the receiver to the near side. Three-step drop. He's going to fire out to the right side. And that pass was intended for Antonio Boyd, but couldn't connect on the, on the slant pattern. Looked like we had a uh, uh, corner blitz on that, so that was an outstanding job. Uh, it's really hard to read their numbers on there, but um, I'm trying to, trying to get that number on him. Yeah, the Rough Riders haven't made it easy on us. I'll tell you, they're no. not the broadcast-friendly jerseys we'd hope for. I believe, Bob and, and Jim, that was number 80, George Freeman again, with the pressure and able to force the incompletion there to force fourth down. So fourth and five now from the 38-yard line. Cleveland in a huddle. Doesn't look like they're going to go for the punt. 12-41 on a running clock. Cobra's 1-0 and on the season. This will be their first league game in Tri-Point. Whole host of games tonight as all 16 teams will be in action. The Tri-Point expanding from eight teams to six teams <coughs> this year. Trips to the far side now as Thompson will be in the backfield by himself. Empty set, two receivers to the near side. You have Golson. We're going to have some movement. That's going to be an off. It's going to be a false start against Cleveland, so the officials give it five and take it away five. Yes, what they were doing, and uh, Cobras, what, when they lined up uh, empty, that's what he was trying to do, is trying to draw them offside, and uh, it just uh, just didn't work. Unfortunately, the offense it did, work. did it. Just didn't, it just worked the other way. Other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it was the, the guard or the center, Antonio Peterson, with the false start, but either way, the Cobras are backed up five. Boyd and Golson will be the receivers to the near side. One receiver to the far side. Thompson in the empty backfield. And he's going to pooch punt it straight up. Hang time is good. It's going to take a Cobra's bounce to the 26-yard line. Make that the 27. It's going to be picked up by a Rough Rider. The whistle hasn't blown down. They're trying to get some bodies down there. Rough Rider's now into a Cobra territory. And will be brought down at the 39-yard line. So... Lesson learned by the Cobras. Stay on that ball and cover it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. He would come to my sidelines. We'd have a little fireside chat because that was dangerous. Absolutely dangerous. Well, if you're the underdog, you take some chances, right, Jared? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Marcus Brown there for the Mahonan Valley Rough Riders with the return. And you got to be aware, no one signaled a fair catch there on the punt. And the Rough Riders took advantage. That was D'Angelo Thompson that uh, ended up bringing him down, and he had four guys on him, and somehow he got through there to make the tackle. So it's an outstanding job by that young man. Todd Glover, I'm sure, probably happy with the result, not happy with the decision, though, Yeah, for the kidding. Rough Riders. As they'll have the ball now first and 10 at the Cobra 40-yard line. 11.34 left here first quarter on Western Reserve Radio on the iMedia One Network. You can catch us on Facebook as well as Twitter, Live 365 app, and tune in. A host of values, or excuse me, venues. I'm going to get it. Yep. Wow, the center had uh, he had to huddle about uh, oh I don't know 15 yards away from the ball, and uh, 
I know they already won the clock, so I don't know if they're going to get the play off or they're going to let them do it. Frank Bond now under center in the I formation for the Rough Riders. Two receivers to the near side. Ball on the ground. Bond's going to fall on it. And it will be a loss of two. Make it three. It'll be second and 13 now for the Rough Riders. I don't know if you noticed, Jim, but we're playing a little bit of Coach Bob uh, offense there. We had a little bit of our formation with a tight end. That looked pretty good, but oh. we got to get the uh, got to get the snap though. Well, we've talked about it so often. The I formation is not seen very often now, and it's almost to the point where some teams don't know how to defend it. Yeah, and that's what worked uh, worked good for us uh, when we were with the Scourge because we would go into the four set, we go to empty set, and then we'd drop down back into the I with a tight end or double tights, and they really we confused them a lot. And I don't know if that was a bad snap for the Rough Riders or. The Rough Riders quarterback was not able to hand it off properly to the running back. Looked like a mess. <laughs> Quite a bad, mess. bad first play for the Rough Riders, to say the least here. Bond now in a shotgun. They were running back to each side. Twin receivers to the near side. Flag on the play, and I believe we're going to have a false start against the Rough Riders. That'll put them back five more. It'll be second and 18 for Mahoning Valley. Again, a little frustrating by the offense. They'll get it. You know, they just have to settle down. Quarterback's got to get into the uh, into this, the uh, huddle and just, you know, relax. Hey, guys, let's go. Let's just play our game. We've practiced this up. We've played. We know what we're doing. Let's take our time. Think. McCauley, Fortson. Excuse me. And uh, we'll be the corners. We'll keep an eye on them on the outside. Fleming. He'll be the outside linebacker. He'll move out to cover the slot. Twin receivers to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Bond in the shotgun, running backs to each of his hips. Three-step drop for Bond, stepping out, looking out to his left. He's going to fire, has a man downfield, and it's going to be overthrown just by a little bit. And an excellent throw, but again, just a little bit too much on it. Yeah, he got behind, and he just he ran a corner route. And uh, I'll tell you what, he had him beat probably about three yards, and he just didn't get it there. Early in the... Early going, both quarterbacks overthrowing their receivers. Frank Bond, the guilty party there. Again, first, uh, well, second game. Again, we look at the first one as kind of a preview. It did count. So as far as these guys, they, they got to get their timing down. They're a little tight right now, so but they'll do well. They'll pick it up. They'll get the timing down. Yeah, the Rough Riders with a 26-6 loss to the Mountain State Outlaws two weeks ago. Score 26 to 6. Bond now with the handoff in the backfield and going to be wrapped up. Nowhere to go. Zaire Graham is going to be pulled down by a host of Cleveland Cobras, including the veteran Robert Littlejohn. We talked about him, more of a Jason Taylor type guy, tall with a long reach. Not a whole lot of places you can go to get away from him. Yeah, he's all over the place. So, very good football player, football sense. Andy Code will come out. Anthony Neal will replace him on the defensive line. And the no. Cobras, I think, are confused here. I thought that they were going to go for it, but now they're putting in their special teams unit for the punt. And back to return to four. The Cobras will be Willie James, the wide receiver. They got nine guys out there. Here we go. Keep an eye on Willie James. I am told he's extremely fast. Plays could break open really quick. And I'll keep using the word really. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you want to punt away from him. You don't want to punt to him. Fourth and eternity now That's as the Cobras sides. are going to be off sides. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference since it's fourth and an eternity, but actually would have been a decent punt, maybe gotten a rough rider roll, but encroachment on the Cobras. It looked like they were going for the block, Coach. Yeah, it looked like they were going. And what they got to lose when they're on the other side of the 50 was just be careful and don't give them anything. So make it fourth down, and oh, we'll call it seven. Or excuse me, 17. Yeah. The sticks, well, there was a stick ten. way downfield <laughs> there. Way down here. Plus so, 10. 8 16 left here, first quarter. It no happens. score. Rough Riders now in punt formation. Willie James back to return for the Cobras. Good snap. Gets it back. It'll be off, and it's going to go off the side of his foot and onto the sideline at the 39 yard line. We'll see where the officials want to give the chop signal. He'll start at the 33 yard line. And the referee is saying, come this way. Keep going. He'll get to the 40, and he'll call it at the 39-yard line. So the Cobras will get their second possession, first and 10, at their own 39-yard line, 802 left here in this quarter. If I may, I'm going to take a little time here, but uh, uh, girls' uh, state championship softball went on today, and 
Canfield, number three, lost to Talmadge, score of 9 nothing, And then Division One, Fitch, White House Anthony Wayne, and Fitch won 6-1. to one. So we're bringing home a state championship with girls at Austin Town Fitch. Congratulations Double. to yeah, local absolutely. softball teams. As Thompson now in a shotgun, Calhoun is right. Trips receivers to the near side, moving left to right. One receiver to the far side. Thompson on the read. Going to keep it himself, take it to the outside, but he's going to be wrapped up. Try to fight to the line of scrimmage, but may have lost a yard on this. And they'll say no, he got back to the line. It'll be second and ten for the Cobras. You know, a little left foot, right foot there. It looked like he was a little short, but that we understand, you know. It all depends on which side of that white line you're on. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything to get around to the defender. <laughs> yeah. Well, they had him bottled up. They had one in the middle, one on his, one on his right, one on his left, and there was somebody barreling down. So, I mean, he didn't lose any yards, so they, they're right there. Probably not the best read on that one. No, not at all. Cobra's now coming back out in a four-wide receiver set, two by two. Thompson in the shotgun. 7-17 left here, first quarter. Thompson taking his time. Three-step drop, looking out to his left. He's going to fire, and that ball's going to be short. Intended for Antonio Boyd again, but went into the turf. He had a little bit of pressure, and he looked like he darted that. He didn't have good arm, uh, arm rotation where he's got to take it above his ear, and looked like he darted it, and that's why he got it short. Well, could be some first-game jitters, Jared. He didn't play in the first game in the preview, but first time on the, on the turf today. Yes, absolutely, Jim, and, and that was a risky throw in a very tight window. Three defenders around Boyd. They're, the Cobras are just lucky that wasn't picked off there. 6.53 left here in this first quarter. No score. Game one of the Tri-Point Football League season here on Western Reserve Radio. As they'll come out with three receivers to the near side. Thompson in a shotgun. D'Angelo Thompson, the receiver to the near side. Thompson, three-step drop. Looking over the middle. He's going to fire. It's going to go off the fingertips. Of, I believe that was Daryl Golson. That's going to bring up fourth down for the Cobras in a punting situation. Uh, they're just playing a little bit tight. Uh, they're lucky that wasn't picked off. Uh, <coughs> there was a uh, player st standing right there. It looked like uh, it looked like McElroy was right there. If he takes about two more steps, he goes right into his hands. But I don't know why he stopped to look at it. But and we mentioned that Mr. Ferris is with us here in the booth too. We drug him all the way from Youngstown. And he's running our little camera here. And little addition here. Yes. Joe Brico looks like he's going to be the punter today for the Cobras as Cleveland tries to find a couple extra bodies now to come cover this punt. 5.57 on a running clock. First quarter, no score. Always special teams, especially the first couple games. But it doesn't get any better during the season because of injuries and people say, no, nah, a little tired. Send somebody else out there. Drives us coaches nuts. Mike Griffin, the middle linebacker for the Rough Riders, and a fellow Wilson Redmond. How about that? How about Holy that? All the way here in Cleveland. Here you go, Youngstown, Ohio. Rico waiting for the snap. Clock now running, 530. Low snap. He'll get it away. It's going to be blocked. Ball's going to roll on the ground, and no matter what happens, this is going to be the Rough Rider ball, and they'll get it at the 43-yard line. Make that the – yeah, well, give him the 33 there as the Cobras are going to recover, but – to no avail. This is something that, and, and Jim knows because he played for me, and all the years that I ever coached, we were always staunt on our special teams. It's a third of the game. I don't care if you're at this level or younger levels. You have got to have your special teams ready to go because they're a third of the game, and this is a prime example why. You have to have them. Everybody's got to know what they're doing because this is the things that happen, and it put them in a pickle. Yeah, that was not good special teams by the Cobras. Just a low snap and not great blocking either. Well, sometimes we'll have to sit down and talk to Coach about bad snaps and tell you. Sometimes they really come back to get you. <laughs> Whether it's rolled back or snapped over the punter's head. And Amazing what the... you can hear from the 10-yard line. I'll just tell you that. I mean, I... Lawn, snapper, lawn snappers, they just got to get that muscle memory. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to keep that one, throw that one out of your head too when you throw it over there, you know, snap it over their head into the end zone. Right. So. I'm not saying that's happened. I'm just no. saying that could have been a possibility. Could Never. Been. Not no, in football. No, no, especially not with Mr. Craven. Never happened. 522 left here is Bond going to be under center. Four wide receivers set. Going to be in the I formation. Going to have Ray Catley as the fullback. We'll talk about Ray here as we get a flag. It looks, I believe that's going to be a delay of game. Oh, illegal substitution against the Rough Riders. 
Ray Catley says, I don't know what you're talking about, but we know Catley. Is that former our, Western Reserve skirt player. Is that our guy? Boy, I hope he's around after the – I'd like to go down and see him. Yeah, certainly. We, uh, we know that uh, Ray Catley will be there, Dave Pringle, and Isaac Coker will be on, yeah, they're down there for the Rough Riders. Wow. So uh, Very good. Those were three players that oh, – they have championship rings now because I'll tell you what, they were outstanding players. And good people. They are. They're very good people. Very respectful to us coaches, and Coach Noble just loved them. Ball be at the Cobra 48-yard line now, 520 left here first quarter. Two receivers at the near side. I formation. Bond now with the handoff to the inside. Nowhere to go for Zaire Graham. And he's going to lose a yard on that. It's going to bring up second in eternity for the Rough Riders. And so far, the Mahoning Valley offense just going backwards. They, they keep trying to hit that right side. They, in my opinion, right now, they got to have to try to do some type of, of counter. Uh, but they're, they're too close to the line. they got to back up or they got to take that job step a little bit flatter and then come back this side. Because they're scraping and they're not getting any push out of that right side of that offensive line. And the Cobras are, have dug in and they're doing an outstanding job of getting under them pads and standing that offensive lineup. Federer and Brown to that far side for the Cobras, both with a sack in game one. And the Rough Riders are lucky they got that play off because it looked like number 53, Eric Smith, the left tackle, was going to jump off, jump off, or false start there. Bond now in a shotgun, some false movement. Excuse me, that looks like that's going to be Kyrie Dennis to the outside, so that'll be another five. Tagged on to this, and it's going to be, uh, I believe somebody called it second and a cup of coffee. <laughs> at some point here, the, the Mahoning Valley offense in the negative. Absolutely. That's a plane ticket to the first down. Absolutely. They just got to get – they, they got to relax. They're, they're, they're forcing too much, and they'll, they'll do just fine. I yeah, told it Eric Smith is the one that jumped for the Rough Riders. 4-10 left here, first quarter. Two receivers then to your side. Bond being the shotgun. They have one running back to each side. Frank Bond step back under pressure, fires over the middle, off the fingertips of his receiver, hits the ground harmlessly, but there was a lot going on there as he tried to get that ball to Kyrie Dennis. There was three people that touched that ball and then finally fell in front of the safety. So a lot of hands touched it, but nobody grabbed it. And that was great pressure by uh, the Cobras there. I'm not sure who the guilty party was. I believe it was number 47. Uh... Don't have a – oh, wait, excuse me, that's Harlan Page. Yes, now Harlan Page usually wears 94 today. You may switch numbers, so it's a confusing everybody. <laughs> I must say Harlan Page is a big boy, and when you got someone charging at you like that, trying to throw a football, yikes, look out. Harlan Page, one of the additions here to the Cleveland Cobras this year's bond now in the shotgun. Pro set, one receiver, excuse me, running back to each side. Three-step drop, looks out to his right. He's under pressure. Oh. Robert Littlejohn is going to sack him. The ball is going to come loose, and they're going to be taken back. The aforementioned Harlan Page taking it. 46 yards for the Cleveland Cobras touchdown. No flags on the play. Robert Littlejohn, we talked about him earlier, reaches around, causes the fumble, and Harlan Page finishes it off with the 46-yard rumble to the end zone. Cobras lead 6-0. He absolutely pancaked the quarterback he got to him slammed him that ball before he could pull the trigger came out and that's an outstanding job and what a great touchdown for the cobras last week or in their previous game had a pick six and now a fumble recovery for a touchdown you know and defensively guys i'll tell you it's so much easier for them to get ahead of the offense. The offense takes time to gel. And when you have that time that you need to gel, a defense like this really helps. Yeah, as, as uh, Coach Noble would say, get quarterback. <laughs> that's and, all you got to do is get quarterback, and that's exactly what they did. The offense always takes a little bit longer. It's just how it goes in football, um, especially at this level. You really can't, you try to spend as much time offensively and defensively, but it's a little bit difficult. So we t I talked about the defensive end earlier, defensive ends earlier, excuse me, for the Cobras, and we talked about Robert Littlejohn, of course, the Cobra veteran, but Devere Glenn making his way from Inglewood, California. We got to see him a couple years ago playing for the Ducks against the Erie Express in the GDFL Championship, and played well there. So these these are going to be two ends they're really looking forward to, kind of like what the Cleveland Browns were looking with, looking at for, with Clowney and yeah. uh, Miles Garrett. So yep, sure up those outsides. So 3-10 left here, first quarter. Cleveland now with a 6-0 lead over Mahoning Valley. 
Ben Lyons in for the extra point. Snap is back, kick is up, and it is headed into the neighborhoods to the west of us. <laughs> 3-10 left here, first quarter. The Cobras take a 7 to nothing lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. We're going to step aside for a quick 30-second break. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the iMedia One Network. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Come out to the 36 beautiful hole design course by Donald Ross, and golf lessons are available by calling the team shop at 330-740-7112. Don't forget about family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings, a family of four with cart for only $25. Or visit the Wick Recreation Area and the lighted par 3 course. Book your tee time today at 330-740-7112 or online at millcreekmetroparks.org. Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Tyree Knight, number two of the Cleveland Cobras, and you're listening to the TriPoint Football League on Western Reserve Radio and the iMedia One Network. Go Cobras! Three ten left here, first quarter. Cobras with a seven nothing lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. Along with Coach Bob Gessler, Jared Vinecourt making his adjustment from the ice to the very warm weather here in Cleveland, summertime, and Dave Ferris pushing the buttons. And we, we have pulled him on the hour and 20 minute trip. As we're going, they don't want him to kick from the 40. They're going to move the ball back to the 35. Receiving team needs to move up. Ben Lyons to kick off for the Cobras. I was talking to nobody. They forgot to push my button. It's all right, Bob. Dave knows right. how to push people's buttons, let <laughs> yeah. me tell you. He, he does. This one's going to be on the ground. It's going to make it all the way to the 40-yard line. Ball's going to be bobbled, picked up, and returned for a couple yards and then brought down by a host of Cobras. Mm -hmm. Cleveland obviously not worried about playing the long game with Mahoning Valley. And it looks like that's going to be Dontrell Nalling on the tackle, the linebacker for the Cobras. Well, here we go. <laughs> Rough Riders, looks like Chris Williams had the return there. Chris Williams, I, and I, if that is the Chris Williams, I'm thinking that should <laughs> yeah. be another former Western Reserve Scourge yes. player. I got to find out that I got to get down on that field afterwards and see these guys. I haven't seen these guys since we have uh, won our championship, it's been a and years. just yeah, it's been a little bit. Gotta and go they out were for dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, expect us to pay. Yeah, Catley will expect <laughs> yeah. us. I know. <laughs> So 3.05 left here first quarter as we enjoy a little nostalgia here on Western Reserve Radio. Of course, the Western Reserve Scourge, the precursor to what the iMedia What Network has become is we're going to have one receiver to each side now. Tight ends to both sides. Vaughn in the shotgun. He'll send a player motion. Ball's going to go high. Vaughn's going to take it upfield himself, and it'll be brought down just past the 45-yard line, down at the 46-yard line. Just some mechanical problems, Coach, so far for the Rough Riders. Yeah, thank God he was able to get that. And he still found a little bit, so they got to hit probably one of the biggest, uh, <laughs> on a muff, the biggest uh, gain they've had. So second and eight for the Rough, excuse me, second and seven. Well, depending on where they're going to put the stick here. <laughs> it keeps moving back and forth. <laughs> yeah. So 235 left here first quarter. We'll try to get some scores for you from around the Tri-Point League. Again, week one officially of the Tri-Point League play. And a little bit of T in the backfield. Yeah, Bond now. Two receivers to the far side. One to the near side. Lower snap. Going to hand off this time. Try to get out to the right side. Nowhere to go. And literally going to bounce off a wall of Cobras and fall back. I believe that was going to be Chris Williams as well on the run. Can't really see these numbers, Coach. Yeah. Rough, right? it, a little tough there. They're kind of in script. So. Yeah, they're a script kind of. And it's they, they, yeah, I'm sure up close looks uh, magnificent, but when you're uh, <laughs> 40 yards well, away. Well, let's be honest. They, little... just, they just didn't check with us, Coach. <laughs> they just didn't check with yeah, us. Yeah, that's terrible. They need to start the checking with the Western Reserve Radio on what that's they That's right. Uh, I'm, well, I don't know how the 216 Network guys are doing over here, but <laughs> I'll tell you that the numbers are so hard to see. <laughs> But we've at least gotten the Cobras to the point where they're not wearing the black numbers on the black jerseys. Yes. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. 127 left here, first quarter. Time winding down here in this first frame. As Bond now in the shotgun. He'll one running back offset to his right side. He'll step up. Trips 
Trip receiver to the near side. Vaughn now rolling out to his left, looking downfield, trying to set his feet. Fires, almost picked up, tipped off the hands of a defender and caught on the sideline. I believe that's going to be Kyrie Dennis. Looks like it went off the hands of uh, Craig Williams. Great, well played by the Cobras, just couldn't catch the ball, and I guess that's why you're on the defensive side of the ball. But. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, it fell right into his lap. He kept his feet and stayed in bounds. That's that's good concentration by him and, and being a ball hawk. That's that's uh, very good there. So 49 seconds left here on a running clock. 7 nothing is the Cobras' lead. As the Rough Riders having a little trouble getting the offense going. Cleveland scoring defensively as Robert Littlejohn would have the strip sack and Harlan Page would return it 46 yards for the Cobra touchdown. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the Rough Riders' first down of the game. Sometimes better lucky than good. <laughs> yeah. So Bond now in the shotgun. He's got three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Be first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Bond back to fire downfield. He's got a receiver open. Going to overthrow him. Again, couldn't catch a number on the receiver there, but might have been Tyler Barnes. Not So we'll, we'll give Tyler the credit on it. With eight seconds left here, stop a clock just before the end of the first quarter. It looked like he hesitated, too, about the 10-yard line, and that may have... Uh... We got some numbers out there that we don't... <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Frank Bond showing some arm, though. He can get the ball downfield. Yeah, we apologize because uh, coming when they're on the set in the offense right now, there's an 88. We don't have it, uh, have him listed, so we apologize. So Twins receiver to the far side. Hand off this time out to the left side. Nowhere to go as Rough Riders trying to find some answers here, but may have lost a yard on the play. That was going to be Catley on the carry, running into a host of Cleveland Cobras. It, it, it looks like their offensive line is just hesitant. They're not, they're not firing off the ball. End of the first quarter here in Lakewood. The Cobras with a 7-0 lead. We're going to step aside for a quick timeout. When we come back, second quarter action here on Western Reserve Radio on the iMedia One Network. During the fall and winter, grilling season never ends, and Gessler Propane is your local supplier that makes sure you get your hard-earned money's worth. Why go to gas exchanges to pay higher prices for tanks not filled to capacity? Gessler Propane makes sure you're prepared for year-round grilling with 100% filled tanks at a reasonable cost. See Bob Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to 3, at Gessler Propane, 702 Youngstown Poland Road, Struthers, or call 330-755-9119. Gessler Propane. They got gas. Located in Applewood Estates in Boardman Township, the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club offers a pleasant family environment. Choose a membership that meets your needs and enjoy a relaxing venue that includes not only swimming for the family, but also youth activities such as competitive swimming, tennis, and more. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere all summer long with the staff and members of the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club. For more information, go to AppleWoodSwimAndTennis.com or call 330-953-2833. You're listening to WRDB, Western Reserve Digital Broadcasting, Youngstown, Warren, Salem, and around the world. Second quarter action coming up here on Western Reserve Radio on the iMedia Network iMedia One Network. I'll get it right. That's okay. I'm new here. You're close. So, yeah, on that note, <laughs> Cobras with a 7 nothing lead. That comes by way of a Robert Littlejohn strip sack and a Harlan Page 46-yard fumble recovery in the first quarter. So the Cobras' first regular season touchdown comes defensively. As Bond now will be in the shotgun, two receivers to the near side. Now one running back to each side. He'll hand it off. Oh, he'll pull it from Catley, roll out to his right, Bond directing traffic, fires downfield, has an open receiver, but he's going to catch it out of bounds. He had Kyrie Dennis on the target. Dennis was open, but just ran out of real estate, Coach. Yeah, that, the throw went out, outside, and he's mad because he should have had that. But he did catch it, but it was a yard out. Now nah, there's an injury. Uh, he went down and slammed his back, so I guarantee you it knocked the wind out of him. 
Jared was seeing it again. We talked about some of the speed. We're certainly seeing it today with these receivers are trying to open up the offenses. Yeah, yeah really trying to run down field, getting those vertical routes, trying to get the big play early here in Lakewood, Ohio. And great pressure from the Cobras defensive back, Michael Marshall. Kyrie Dennis, the one down on the sideline here. As he'll have some of his teammates come over and check on him. Oh, yeah. He's holding the, he's holding the belly, so, you know, he'll get the wind knocked out of him. Which, uh, we'll yeah. take that. That's, that's not a bad thing. You can no. recover from that. Yeah, you it's can recover it. from that. Nice fake, too, when he uh, faked going to the left and then bootlegged this way. He had. He had a little bit of pressure. But I'll tell you what, throw was there if he keeps it in bounds. He's getting receivers open. He's just overthrowing them for probably three, four yards. Again, we, we talk about the arm strength of Bond. I mean, he's really doing a great job on that. When he gets his feet set, he'll get a little yeah. more accuracy. And that's going to be a dangerous long game as Mahoning Valley will come out for the punt. 14-39 left here, second quarter. Cobras with a 7 nothing lead. And it's going to be Willie James back to return. He's going to post up right around his own 15-yard line. Okay, what do we got now? Illegal Guess substitution <laughs> on the Rough Riders, so they'll move it back five more yards. <laughs> Again? And, I, I, and I'm starting, if I, I'm not keeping the stats here, but they may have more yards and penalties than they yes, offense. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It'll, now they just, Cobra's got to be careful not jumping off. And I'm Willie James should have a nice return here. So they'll get this one away. It's going to be tipped at the line. It's going to go out of bounds. And we'll see where they mark this one. So anything that can go wrong for the Rough Rider so far has. Ball was, looked like it was tipped, Coach, and went over into the Rough Rider sideline across the field. Yeah, they got really work on special teams here. That's going to be something that, again, I would be working on. Right off the bat, you spend at least a half hour of your practice, I don't care if it's one or two practices, they have to do that. It's just they look very sloppy on special teams. And over here by the Cobra sideline, uh, Eric Bankhead and for the Rough Riders, Tyler Barnes were getting into it. Bankhead shoved Barnes. Referees had to separate them. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't go any further throughout the game. Yeah, this isn't hockey. We can't do that here. It's just right. a fireside chat. We'll get That's thrown all. out. They were just talking, you know, what they had for dinner. <laughs> Two receivers now to the far side, two to the near side. Anthony Neal will be the slot to the near side as Thompson will hand this off. Nowhere to go. He'll lose a couple yards on the run. It's going to be T.J. Johnson. It'll be a loss of two for the Cobras, second and 12 now for Cleveland. And Taylor Johnson missed his block there, not able to secure on that left side. And that's what made the Cobras lose some yardage, yardage there. I can't get the number um, of the Rough Rider who got in there. I'll tell you what, he shot, he shot and got through that block, and he was, he was on him quick. 13-25 left here, second quarter. Cobras with a 7-0 lead. As they'll go out, trips to the far side. Shotgun now for the Cobras. Thompson now, quick pass into the inside. That's going to be complete. Pass midfield to the 40, 30, 25, 20. One man to beat and brought down at the 10-yard line. Cobras first and goal at the 10. And I didn't get a number. I believed I was going to be. I'll see if we can get a number on that. Marcus Brown was in on the tackle for the Rough Riders that saved the touchdown. I believe that was going to be a real Taylor. Just came to the inside, Coach. Caught that quick pass. And yeah. They did a few did, good moves. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they used the speed to, to the T, so. 12.47 on it. A running clock here, second quarter. Cobras with a 7 the lead. First and 10 now. Excuse me, first and goal from the 10-yard line. That was Matthew Wise that caught that. Bart Evans, the receiver now to the far side. Keyshawn McCote will be... To the left side here is Thompson now on the option. Going to fake it, keep it himself. Maybe picked up a yard on the play. And it'll be second and goal for Cleveland. Trying to run that inside zone on that. And it looks...
looked like Thompson was going to pitch it to the left side, but he kept it himself. And we'll see if the Cobras run another play here or try to do the quick screen pass like they did in that big gain earlier on the drive. Certainly worked out well. May have found something in there. Well executed on that. Looked very crisp on that very long play. Sometimes it's just that simple. Short and sweet. That's what gets you the yardage, and that's what gets you the touchdowns. Some great athletes here for the Cobras. T.J. Johnson, the running back now to the left of Thompson. Three receivers to the far side, moving right to left on your devices. Thompson, back to pass. He'll quick pass yep. it over the middle. It's going to be caught into the end zone. It will be Keyshawn Bacote for the Cleveland touchdown. 11.30 of the second quarter. Cobras take a 13-0 lead. I was going to absolutely say, if they got, if he's, somebody doesn't have inside leverage, that slant's going to be there. And he was head up on him, and he was playing tough. So he gave him the inside, and that was wide open. And that was a great cut inside. Great route ran by the Cobras. And slants are bread and butter for wide receivers and quarterbacks. And now the Cobras have a two-possession lead. He did a great job using his body. Yeah, the shield out well, the it, with the with quarterback looked right and then saw, he looked right, saw that he had, that they had both had inside leverage. So then that's why he looked here. He was had that inside receiver and DB was head up on him. So he knew he could beat him to that inside. So it was one, two and release. And that's what he did. And then the uh, receiver had to fight to the goal. Ben Lyons on to kick the extra point for the Cobras. Steve Anthony, the long snapper, snap his back, kick is up. And it is good. So at 11.30 left here in the second quarter, the Cobras take a 14-0 lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. We're going to step aside for a quick timeout. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the iMedia One Network. Professional, fast, highly knowledgeable, easy to work with. These are real reviews by customers of Sand Rock Concrete. For all your concrete block, brick, stone, stonework, and excavating needs, call Jerry Sandrock. For your free estimate at 330-506-0013, Sandrock Concrete is fully insured and ready to make your ideas a reality. Sandrock Concrete is a proud supporter and sponsor of Mahoning Valley High School Football on Western Reserve Radio. Eleven thirty left here in this second quarter. Cobras with a 14-0 lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. I want to give a shout-out to some supporters for the Cleveland Cobras this year. I want to thank them for their investment. We'll start with Smoky Seafood Barbecue. Sexy, sophisticated, and savory. Call 216-632-1506. Who doesn't like barbecue? Uh, especially that way that was described. Yep, actually. Also naturally nourished. <laughs> Nourished, advanced <laughs> esthesian, 330-937-8399. Give them a call. Also, Gibson Elite Athletics, Cleveland's elite athletic training. Go to GibsonEliteAthletics.com for more information. As Lions is going to kick this one downfield, we're going to head towards the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. And I, I know, Coach, I know your love for the kicking game and kickers in particular. But it's nice to have somebody with that skill that can that can get you. you yeah, know, you can get put the ball it, in the end zone. Like exactly, that. you put it in the end zone. That that, that forces them to uh, drive the field. That is the one thing I do will appreciate about a kicker. Not there's not much. And Jared, if you haven't figured out, Coach loves kickers. <laughs> I can tell so much, and that's what's so difficult about the kicking position is all the pressure that's put on on game-winning field goals, getting the touchbacks that you need, getting them pinned back in their own end zone. It's, it's really, you don't love them until you need them, really. Right. I think yeah. I, I, I th they're on the field for seven seconds. Sorry, Just Bill. do your unless, job. Unless you have the great <laughs> Cleveland Browns kicker, Phil Dawson. We had the great the scourge kicker, Bill Santel. <laughs> <laughs> and every time he missed it, he blamed it on the holder of the snapper. <laughs> <laughs> Again, nostalgia night here in Lakewood. The physics and mechanics for a great field goal. 11.30 left here, second quarter. Bond now in the shotgun, one running back to each side. Catley to his right, one receiver to the near side, two to the far side. They'll hand it off to Catley. Catley trying to find his way onto the outside. Nowhere to go, and he'll be brought down in the backfield. And trying to get a number on that. I believe that was going to be Cam Scott. Coming in from his corner position, and again, another blitz there. Cobras 
really comfortable walking people up to the line. Yeah, what I think what they're reading is is if the end blocks down, it's an automatic fire. So he's just chasing, and that's exactly what he did because Catley just hesitated for a second and bang from the backside. He was right on him. Carlos Alexander making his way into the Cobras defense now as well. 10.54 left here. Second quarter. Cleveland with a 14-0 lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders out of Youngstown. Owned and operated by Ike Griffin, the former Wilson Redmond. I got to throw that in there. Absolutely. Bond now in a shotgun, three-step drop. Under pressure, going to step up. And he's going to break a few tackles, try to get to the outside. He's going to get a good block from Catley. Try to make his way past the 25, and he'll go out of bounds there. As he'll pick up. Not sure he picked up much on there. It looked like a little more from this angle, but um, I think he got, I think he got that a twenty-five is where they're going to mark it. That's what so, it looked like. So there it'll be go. third and ten now for the Rough Riders. And that was great pressure from the Cobras, both defensive ends, bringing pressure onto Frank Bond, and then Frank Bond just doing a great job of scrambling out of the pocket and making something out, making nothing out of something. Now we talked about the defensive end here for the Cobras. Anthony Neal and Devere Glenn in now for the Cobras. And again, both players tall and rangy. So to get around them, that takes some skill. But Frank Bond doing a good job making a few moves, trying to make something out of nothing. Yeah, because that could have been deadly. That could have been a big loss. Instead, he, at least he got a yard gain on it. 9.33 here on a running clock. We'll call it third and ten for the Rough Riders at their own 25-yard line. Bond in a shotgun. Low snap. Frank trying to pick it up. Under pressure. Going to find some room in the middle. He's going to get past the 35. 40. He'll make it out to midfield, and he'll go out of bounds at the midfield stripe. That'll be a first down for the Rough Riders, and they've got a little bit something going, even if it is on some improvisation. Well, I'll tell you what. He could scamper. He saw that opening, and they I thought he was going to get hit around the 40-yard line, and it opened up, and uh, he turned the Jets on. And outstanding job. Bond bringing out his inner Russell Wilson or Cam Newton, if you will. But great job with Bond seeing the hole through the middle, running straight through and getting the first down for the Rough Riders. First and 10 at midfield for the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. 8.59 left here on the clock. 14-0 is the score. Cobras with the lead. Rough Riders having their best drive of the game so far. There's a point in the game where they had more penalty yards than offensive yards. <laughs> That's going to happen sometimes on these first games. You know, you just got to just do your job. They seem to be uh, tightening up here, but, again, quarterback's legs. Bond in a shotgun. Try to get her away on the cross on the handoff. Contact made in the backfield. But Raven Jones going to break the tackle, and he's still going to be brought down in the backfield. But great contact there initially by Harlan Page, who already has a touchdown today. It, 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 when they run an offensive play, it's, like, it, it's just not flowing right. Um, it looks like there's just too much hesitation somewhere. The defensive, or excuse me, the offensive backfield's got to move quicker. I, there's just too much delay when they, run a, uh, when they run a play, and that's what I'm seeing up here. That was great by Harlan Page to, to read the fake handoff initially to number 20 of the Rough Riders, Raymond Caitlin Melkroy, and able to read that fake handoff and get, help to get the, the loss for the, co for the Cobras. Harlan Page, a lot to handle there in that A-gap between the guard and the center. So that's a big task there as Bond now again back in the shotgun. You have Jones at his left, Catley to his right. One receiver to each side. Bond back to throw, three-step drop. Fires down left field, trying to find a guy on the inside. It's going to be picked off at the 26-yard line by the Cobras, brought out to the 35-40. He'll pass midfield, get to the 40, has one man to beat, will get the block. Back, going to cut back to the inside and into the end zone for the second defensive touchdown of the day for the Cobras. And no. we're going to have a flag on the play. Terrell Lively may have this one wiped out. A 74-yard interception return. We'll see if it came before or after the interception. We're calling it pushing from the back. Is it on, but it's going to be on who? I'm no. assuming, I see Harlan Page arguing yeah, it, so... They're bringing it back. Is it going to be defensive pass interference, or is it going to be an illegal block in the back after the interception? Well, they're just going to take it from the spot of the foul, so it's going to be on. I'm assuming it's going to be on the interception. So illegal block in the back is going to be the call, I as the Cobras so. will get the turnover, but they will not get the touchdown. And Terrell Lively doing a great job going down the far sideline, 
cutting back inside, getting into the end zone on the 76-yard interception return. That'll be wiped out. However, the Cobras will take over offensively. Yeah, they'll get the ball about on the 44-yard line. And that's where the umpire is indicating they will set the ball. But nonetheless, second turnover of the day for the Cobras. And that was great zone coverage by the Cobras to able to force that interception and great man coverage on the sideline there and doing great defensively here in their first game. That was one of the things that Jesse Caldwell was very happy about, the amount of speed, not only size, but speed that the Cobras were going to have. And again, we talked about how, how these time, it takes time for these offenses at this level to develop some kind of continuity, but the Cobras indeed defensively are strong, so they'll keep you in the game even if you're going to make mistakes offensively. Well, their offensive line is doing a good job. The piggies up front, I mean, they're doing, a, they're doing a pretty good job. They just got to sustain their blocks and open them up and get these guys turned to get some alleys. First and 10 now from the 45-yard line. 7-12 left here, second quarter. Cobras with a 14-0 lead. Thompson now with the snap. Quick handoff up the middle. T.J. Johnson pass midfield out to the 45-40. He'll get into Rough Rider territory and be brought out of bounds at the 39-yard line. First and 10 for Cleveland. Smart run. He came left and was uh, just tipped his head back to the right, saw it open up, and then he took it right. Everything was flowing left, and he went right. And that's the best run the Cobras have had so far in this game. So 6.51 on a running clock. Thompson now in the shotgun, two receivers to each side. First and 10. A little confusion on the play. Thompson going to take it himself out to the right side. He's going to slip a tackle and make his way down to the 30-yard line. He'll be close to a first down. Depends on where they want to spot it. Slap Thompson, not normally the running quarterback type, but did a great job. It looked like he went to hand it off and then maybe misread that one. Yeah, that's, I, at that I did not. It was hard to tell. I think he wanted to give it, but he ended up keeping it. So They're going to mark him a yard short, short here, so it'll be second and one at the 31-yard line. 6-13 left here, second quarter. Cleveland with a 14-0 lead, and now the Cobras offense starting to get moving. I, sorry, sorry, Coach. Either, either Thompson... Uh, misread the Cobra's play call or realized the defense uh, was going to read that pitch, so he just kept it for himself either way in good positive yards. Trips receivers to the near side now. Again, second and one. Thompson in the shotgun. He'll hand it off up the middle. Be TJ Johnson dragging players down the field, down to the 20. Would be a first down. Flag on the play, though. And oh, by the, judging by Slap Thompson's reaction, I'm, this is probably going to against the Cobras. I'm going to think holding. It looked like... Uh, once he broke the, uh, once he broke the line of scrimmage, there was a little bit of "I'll hold you from the back." They'll never see me, but they got him. Sam Bullock now will check in for the Cobras. Antoine Peterson, Sr. will check out, as will T.J. Johnson. T.J. Johnson active in the game two weeks ago against the West Virginia Leviathan. That was a Thompsonless offense that day, and T.J. Johnson did a good job. Yeah. I believe that was the Cobra's second or third penalty of the half. So trip receivers to the far side now. One receiver to the near side. Thompson in the shotgun. He'll have Calhoun to his left. Thompson back to pass. Takes one step. Fires over the middle. Going to be thrown into the turf. Really no receiver in the area, but some claims that got one receiver claiming he may have been held. I tell you what, though, he had two guys, one on top of him, one inside. If he would have thrown that where it needed to be, that was a pick because there was somebody standing right in front of the receiver. Clock starting to run here. 5-10 left here just before the half. Cobras with a 14-0 lead. As the Cobras get one offensive touchdown, one defensive touchdown. In game one of the 2023 Tri-Point Football League season. Defensively, they're not playing bad. Rough Riders are, you know, they're there. Offensively, they just got to get uh, their timing down and get some stuff going. Yeah, the effort definitely there for Mahoning Valley. Thompson in the shotgun now. Trip receiver to the near side. Three-step drop. Going to roll out to his right now under pressure. Looking for a receiver downfield. And he's going to throw it out of bounds. Smart veteran decision at that point. Nobody was open, didn't force it. Yeah, and he was running for his life, and when he was running right, there was nobody right. Everybody was either center to field or left, and there was no reason to flick anything and uh, create a interception. So that was a smart move by him. So third and 11 now for the Cobras, 430 left here. 
in this first half. And if you're the Cobras, you would really love to convert here in third down and keep the clock running, keep the ball for the rest of the quarter, put up some offensive points. I think we have a, a math mistake on the far side because yeah. I think it's going to be fourth down as Barrico comes in okay. to punt. There we go. Now we're <laughs> Cause I was throwing gonna, us off here. Yeah, I was kind of confused there myself because we we're in punt position and I see third down and I didn't know what was going on. So okay, so they got to get they there. got us. They got us, Jerry. They got they us. Got us. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> that will happen many a times between now and December. <laughs> yep, indeed it will. So third and eleven, or excuse me, fourth and eleven. See, they've got me. Conditioned. See, I got you. There you go. Barico now to punt. Steve Anthony in the snap for the Cobras. They'll be punting. On the Rough Rider 41-yard line. So this should go deep into Rough Rider territory. Anthony with a nice snap. Rico will get this one away. It's going to be blocked. It again. And it's going to be picked up by the Rough Riders and returned all the way to the end zone. 55 yards on the return for the Rough Riders. And they get on the, on the scoreboard defensively as well. Can't get a number, Coach, if you can see it, who got the block and the recovery and I, return that. I believe that was number 55, Christopher Mackey, with the block and return for a touchdown. That's the Cobra's second punt today that has been blocked. Yeah. Uh, it looked like it's hard to read their numbers, so I'm going to – what it looks like, and it's what Dave believes, it was 25, but we do not have a 25 listed on the Rough Riders. Uh. Okay, so we do apologize for that. Nonetheless, Cobras, excuse me, the Rough Riders get on the board. They trail 14 to 6 with 335 left here in this second quarter. 55 yard punt block and return. As I'm sure head coach Adam Rogerson cannot be happy with that. Snap wasn't bad. Maybe not as fast as they wanted it to be, but. Well, as much as we say that quarterbacks, receivers, linemen are so important, again, go back to the kickers, punters. This is the difference. It just takes too long. It looks like you got a lineman who is trying to punt the ball or, or a, a linebacker. You need to get somebody who's going to be in there, catch that ball, and get it out of there. He's holding it too much, and that's exactly what's happening. So the Rough Riders will go for two on this. Vaughn will be in the shotgun. He'll have Raven Jones to his left. Twin receivers to the right. Two receivers to the far side. Vaughn now back to pass. Going to fire out to the right side. Try to find a corner of the end zone. Hand fighting going on in the corner there. The officials aren't going to call it. And the conversion will be no good. And the Rough Riders will continue to trail by a score of 14 to 6. We'll keep it right here, Coach, as we talk about some of those week one mistakes. We're seeing them here, especially on special teams. Yeah. And that is costing both teams. I, I, again, a lot of coaches um, in, in this level, and we were there, um, they don't spend a lot of time on special teams. And that was something that we did, again, I, I stress. And that helped us in a lot of games. We had a lot of punt returns uh, for touchdowns, kickoff returns, uh, a lot of block stuff on defense. So we've done quite well, quite well. So, and Jared, again, we talked about being patient, as we saw back in September when we saw the new Phantoms. Right. Like, we, we thought there was some work that needed to be done, and we were patient. They win a championship, and certainly we don't judge everything based on week one, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, it's going to take some time for the Cobras to shake off the rust and are having a great performance here in the first half against the Rough Riders. But as we keep saying, got to work on the special teams. That's the number one thing they have to work on going into halftime. 3.35 left here in this first half. Cleveland with a 14-6 lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. We got started with the scoring in the first quarter as Robert Littlejohn, we get the strip sack, and Harlan Page would go 46 yards for the Cobra touchdown. The extra point would be good. Oh. And then Keyshawn McCote would catch a slap Thompson pass in the second quarter. Going nine yards into the end zone. Nice job on the slant. And then the Rough Riders get a blocked punt, and they return it 55 yards to get on the board as well. 335 again left here in this half. Rough Riders kicking team on there for the second time today. This one's going to be a short kick. 
Down to the 35-yard line. Juwan Carlisle with the ball, trying to bring it upfield. He's going to take a shot. Going to hold on to the ball, though. He'll be brought down at the 42-yard line. That's where the Cobras will take over first and 10 with 327 left here in the second quarter. He hit the kicker, who happens to be a defensive tackle and offensive tackle, and it was like he hit a brick wall and bounced about two yards back. So that was an outstanding job by that young man to get down there and, and uh, cover that. But uh, I, I think Deion Sanders would disagree with that and say that was a bad business decision. <laughs> yeah, especially running right into that tree trunk. Holy mackerel. E.J. Bibb skipping onto the field now, having a good time. I don't. Uh, it's Cobra's football. That's right. I mean, if you're not you having, having fun, then you're not doing it right. Well, that's the other thing. You come out here, you work your rear ends off, you do what you got to do, but you got to have fun. And that was something that I believe that we we pushed on all of our teams at all of our levels that where we coached. And it, you got to have fun with it. You, you can't keep yelling and, and worrying about things, and we got a timeout. And I believe the Cobras will take their first time out of the half. 3.27 left here in the second quarter. We're going to step aside for a timeout as well. You're listening to the Cleveland Cobras football right here on the iMedia One Network. During the fall and winter, grilling season never ends, and Gessler Propane is your local supplier. Then make sure you get your hard-earned money's worth. Why go to gas exchanges to pay higher prices for tanks not filled to capacity? Gessler Propane makes sure you're prepared for year-round grilling with 100% filled tanks at a reasonable cost. See Bob Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to 3, at Gessler Propane, 702 Youngstown Poland Road, Struthers, or call 330-755-9119. Gessler Propane. They got gas. <laughs> 327 left here in this half. Cobra's taking over first and 10 at their own 42 yard line. I was waiting for the Wolfman or Frankenstein <laughs> to come out and walk across that, that the is, field. That is I love Dave it. Ferris's favorite return music. <laughs> As Thompson now have two receivers to each side. He'll send Edwards in motion. He'll pitch it to Edwards. Edwards under pressure, going to be brought down for a loss of a couple yards. It'll be second and 12 now for the Cobras, and uh, not much doing on that one, Coach. Well, I'll tell you what. That could have been one massive collision because it looked like it was number 10. Zier Graham was right there, and if he squares up, that could have been a – Ooh, that could have been an absolutely explosion, and there could have been a drop ball on that one. He whiffed on him. He hits him with that shoulder and drops him. That would have been, oops. Wind starting to pick up here in the Lakewood area. 2.48 left here on a running clock. Thompson now in a shotgun. He'll have John Washington to his left. He'll have Edwards and Boyd to the left side. Quick pass. Out to Edwards. Edwards trying to fight his way past the 40 and down at the 44-yard line. That's a great job by that corner. Uh, 20. Yeah, hard to, like hard to see these number guys. Yeah, it is apologize. hard. It looks like Frank Boyd, number two, maybe. I believe that was number 27, but we don't have a 27 on the roster. Thompson the back riders. to pass. Three-step drop. Shoulder fakes. Going to take it himself upfield. Get past the 45 and down. At the 46-yard line. Yeah, correct myself. Dave's here. He's helping us out with these numbers. It looked like a Mike Holland. I apologize. Cobra's right back to the line now. D'Angelo Thompson to the far side, and we'll have a stoppage as the Cobras will take their second timeout of the half. 148 left here in the second quarter. We're going to step aside for a quick 30-second timeout here on the Cleveland Cobras Radio Network and the iMedia One Network. Located in Applewood Estates in Boardman Township, the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club offers a pleasant family environment. Choose a membership that meets your needs and enjoy a relaxing venue that includes not only swimming for the family, but also youth activities such as competitive swimming, tennis, and more. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere all summer long with the staff and members of the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club. For more information, go to applewoodswimandtennis.com or call 330-953-2833. Left here in this half. Over the 14 to 6 lead over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. Rough Riders now with Thompson in. Fourth down, but 
We're going to have some oh. movement up front. And it's going to be a false start against the Cobras. So it'll be fourth and 11 now. As Cleveland will keep the offense on the field. Haven't had much success with the punting team. so But the defense has played well, so they're going to play to that strength. Coach. Right. I talked to – we were just talking it uh, on the break, and I said – just have him quick kick it. There's nobody back, and just just get it and punt it because their punters just – their specials have not been good. And indeed, they heard you as Thompson will kick this one. It'll hit it to 30, and going to take a Cobra roll with a little bit of help from D'Angelo Thompson. We'll see where they mark the ball. We got a flag. Another flag on the play. About the 42. Again, we talk about these week one jitters and – some of the mistakes made as the officials are going to meet right around the 46-yard line to discuss this one. 140 left here in this half. Cobras with a 14-6 lead here in week one of the TriPoint Football League. Adam Rogerson giving a first down signal. So blindside block against the defense. That will be a personal foul and an automatic first down for the Cobras. And... 140 left here, Coach. One timeout. Plenty left to work with. Yeah, absolutely. But that's as far as the defense, you just can't do that. I mean, think about what's going on. You've stopped them from here. They're going to quick kick it, and I, and I don't get it. Okay, wait a minute. We're arguing something here. Hold on. Hold. It's Mr. Bob Roth used to say, hold the phones back in the day. I don't know, Jared. We've tried to change some of the officials' decisions all year long. <laughs> we weren't real good at it. I don't know if they're going to be any more successful here. Yeah, we had as good as luck as we did with slot machines at the casino in Cleveland. <laughs> That's how there good we, we are go. with the refs' choices. So Dave Pringle actually coming out on the field trying to help out, not in uniform today. Okay, I believe the defense, uh, they must have picked up the flag. So or maybe I guess that slot machine just hit there, Jared. <laughs> they may have talked them out of this one, but that or they're talking about the spot of the ball. Not sure which. Okay, I'm confused now. Well, I guess we're just going to have to wait to see There's, where the ball is going to be. That's they're going to say it's going to be Mahoney Valley's ball at the 15-yard line from the way they're placing it. Yeah, but that should have been, that should have been this way. That so they're going to say that was going to be after the change of possession. Therefore, okay. it will All be right. against the Valley. Yes, and they'll add it, they'll add it to uh, Valley. So okay, I got 14-6 is the score. Cleveland with the lead. 140 left here in this first half. If you're Mahone Valley here, you want to run a quick two-minute drill, try to get some points before the end of the half. We haven't seen their kicker kick yet today as they went for two earlier on their return for a touchdown. Now, the kicking game has been dangerous on both sides. Yeah, so. I, no, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say run something safe. Quick handoff, just run in the middle, try to run the clock. If they don't use the timeouts, that'll be fine. But uh, <laughs> you got them backed up now. I wouldn't take any chances with anything. Vaughn now in the shotgun. On running back to each side. Two receivers to the far side. One single receiver to the near side. It became McCauley on the defense for the Cobras. He'll be one-on-one. -on -one. Vaughn now with the handoff. Going to take the coach's advice. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage and brought down by a host of black and green jerseys. And I'm shocked that there's no timeout. I don't know how many timeouts left that the Cobras have, but I would have burnt. I would have definitely burnt one. Yeah, the Cobras have one left, and I believe Mahoney Valley hasn't taken a timeout yet. So they have plenty of time on the clock and plenty of timeouts to run a drive here, but it looks like they just want to run out the clock and get to halftime. Yeah, just be safe. This, that would be silly to try to do anything this deep. I would let the quarterback do what he got to do. I'd just send your two uh, running backs in the middle and just see what he can pick out because he seems to be your best, best and fast athlete out there. Two receivers to the far side for the Rough Riders. Chris Williams be to the near side. He'll be one-on-one -on -one with Cam McCauley. Bond now. Trying to keep the ball. He's going to work his way upfield. Nowhere to go. We brought down just past the 15-yard line. May have made it to the 16 with 37 seconds left here in the half. And I think you're right, Coach. The Rough Riders should go in the locker room. Maybe look for some adjustments as there's an entire way to go here. Close game here in Lakewood. Cobras 14 Owning Valley Rough Riders, six. Mistakes have, have hurt both teams, obviously, and obviously the special teams have not helped the matters either. They're so, just going to let it run out. Yeah, with officials. 13 seconds left, yep. it looks like the Rough Riders will make their way back to their sideline, and we will head to the half here in week one 
of the Tri-Point Football League. Cleveland leads this one by a score of 14 to 6. And Jared, again, we talk about mistakes. We talk about earliness here. It is shown, but no, no lack of athleticism. Great athletes out here. It's going to be a timing issue. Yeah, it is going to be a timing issue, Jim, and you got to have short-term memory. you got to go in, fix the stuff that you weren't able to do in the first half and go out and execute in the second half and put points on the board if you're the Cobras. Yep, Todd Glover will work on that for the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. Adam Rogerson will try to clean it up for the Cobras. We're going to step aside for a timeout. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the iMedia One Network. During the fall and winter, grilling season never ends, and Gessler Propane is your local supplier. Then make sure you get your hard-earned money's worth. Why go to gas exchanges to pay higher prices for tanks not filled to capacity? Gessler Propane makes sure you're prepared for year-round grilling with 100% filled tanks at a reasonable cost. See Bob Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to 3, at Gessler Propane, 702 Youngstown Poland Road, Struthers, or call 330-755-9119. Gessler Propane. They got gas. Gas. Hi, it's Mark Means, host of By All Means, Tuesdays at 5, right here on Western Reserve Radio, WRDB, The Scourge. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Come out to the 36 beautiful hole design course by Donald Ross, and golf lessons are available by calling the team shop at 330-740-7112. Don't forget about family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings, a family of four with cart for only $25. Or visit the Wick Recreation Area and the lighted par 3 course. Book your tee time today at 330-740-7112 or online at millcreekmetroparks.org. Located in Applewood Estates in Boardman Township, the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club offers a pleasant family environment. Choose a membership that meets your needs and enjoy a relaxing venue that includes not only swimming for the family, but also youth activities such as competitive swimming, tennis, and more. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere all summer long with the staff and members of the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club. For more information, go to applewoodswimandtennis.com or call 330-953-2833. Professional, fast, highly knowledgeable, easy to work with. These are real reviews by customers of Sand Rock Concrete. For all your concrete block, brick, stone, stonework, and excavating needs, call Jerry Sandrock. For your free estimate at 330-506-0013, Sand Rock Concrete is fully insured and ready to make your ideas a reality. Sand Rock Concrete is a proud supporter and sponsor of Mahoning Valley High School Football on Western Reserve Radio. So, are you enjoying our station? Now you can take us along on your mobile device wherever you go. Wow! The free Live 365 app is available for both Apple and Android devices. That sounds like fun. I'll give it a try. Just go to the Apple app or Google Play Store and download it today. You're listening to WRDB, Western Reserve Digital Broadcasting, Youngstown, Warren, Salem, and around the world. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. It's it's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like, like the storm. storm. When, when it kicked in, in we had we a plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no time. We had no idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Back 
here at Garfield Stadium in Lakewood. Halftime here, 5.50, uh, just about five and a half minutes left here in the half. Cobras with a 14-6 lead. The scoring got started in the first quarter as Robert Littlejohn would have the strip sack on quarterback Frank Bond. Harlan Page would pick up the ball and run it back 46 yards to get the Cobras on the board. The conversion would be good. Second quarter action, it would be Slap Thompson to Keyshawn Bacote on the nine-yard touchdown pass. And then later in the second quarter, the Rough Riders would get back on, or excuse me, would get on the board with a 55-yard punt block return for a touchdown. And uh, kicking game again, Coach, dangerous for both teams today. Yeah. You might see a lot more going forward on fourth down. Yeah, I just uh, they, they need a lot of work on that. And, and unfortunately, Mahoney Valley needs to uh, work on their offense because their timing is off. So their defense, not playing bad. They're doing a pretty good job. Defensive backs are covering. Um, if anything, I would try to run some a little bit quicker stuff because uh, Cobras have not covered things quite well as a defensive back. So I'd probably attack that a little bit. And, you know, well, there's somebody out there that says statistically, if you go for it on fourth down, you have more success. If you never punt. We've seen, I've seen that a special on that. Yeah. And uh, that might be the case today. It might be safer to go on fourth down. Yeah, you see a lot in high school football, they don't really punt the ball and they go, on, go for it on fourth down. And more times than not, they convert. You know, and it's funny because there's a, and I don't recall, it's a, it's a high school team that has never punted. This man and I think that's been, a special we had seen. Yeah. It just, which <laughs> he says statistically you'll do better, like yeah. Jared said. You and know. It's, it, he's been doing it for umpteen years. He's, been, he's like, a, they're going to put a statue in there, and he just never punts. He goes for it because he, uh, apparently his percentage well, rate is amazing. And all I can say for you, Coach, is the only thing that means is there's no kicker. <laughs> yeah. yeah <he> so <laughs> <laughs> want to take an opportunity to uh, thank some of the sponsors for the Cleveland Cobras, as we want to include Erica Marie Financials. Now accepting new clients. Bookkeeping services is Erica Marie Financials. Call 330-785-5432 or go to ericamariefinancials.com. Also, I want to again thank Smoky Seafood Barbecue. Call 216-632-1506. Sexy, sophisticated, and savory. <laughs> we have to go to that. There's just something about that place and their slogan. I, I just got to get there. Well, I mentioned that to Savon Gibson. He sent me this information, and I'm like, I love barbecue. And I don't care what it is. You barbecue it, throw sauce on it, I'm in. And he says he's got to get me hip. Great smoked seafood. So uh, It's fine. I just don't know where the sexy comes in. I'm, it's, I'm just a little confused. I don't know. I, have you seen how I looked at a rack of ribs? <laughs> I didn't get this. I didn't you get guys this. are giving me hungry. You're getting me hungry. I'm drooling over And that's over the here. whole point. I so haven't, I haven't had dinner yet. Have I seen you in a rack of so, ribs? And is I, that I'm eating or wearing it? I am an addict when it comes to that. But we're making Jared hungry, and so we're working on it. Smoky Seafood Barbecue, man. We're doing it right we here. we got to hit that. Absolutely. God, <laughs> that's great. I, I want to thank Gibson Elite Athletics, Cleveland's Elite Athletic Training Center. Call or excuse me, go to GibsonEliteAthletics.com for more information. Just a little over two minutes left here in the half. We're going to step aside for a quick timeout when we come back. Third quarter action here from Garfield Stadium in Lakewood. It's the Cleveland Cobras 14, the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders 6. We're back after this. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Mill Creek Golf Course is the host venue for the AJGA PGA Hope Program, eight high school teams, and two collegiate teams. Mill Creek Golf Course is your Callaway certified golf hub fitting facility. It was named the PGA of America's National Merchandiser of the Year for a public facility 2022. Book your tee time at 330-740-7112 or online at at MillCreekMetroParks.org. During the fall and winter, grilling season never ends, and Gessler Propane is your local supplier. Then make sure you get your hard-earned money's worth. Why go to gas exchanges to pay higher prices for tanks not filled to capacity? Gessler Propane makes sure you're prepared for year-round grilling with 100% filled tanks at a reasonable cost. See Bob Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to 3, at Gessler Propane, 702 Youngstown Poland Road, Struthers, or call 330-755-9119. Gessler Propane. They got gas. Located in Applewood Estates in Boardman Township, the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club offers a pleasant family environment. Choose a membership that meets your needs and enjoy a relaxing venue that includes not only swimming for the family, but also youth activities such as competitive swimming, 
tennis, and more. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere all summer long with the staff and members of the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club. For more information, go to applewoodswimandtennis.com or call 330-953-2833. Professional, fast, highly knowledgeable, easy to work with. These are real reviews by customers of Sand Rock Concrete. For all your concrete block, brick, stone, stonework, and excavating needs, call Jerry Sandrock. For your free estimate at 330-506-0013, Sand Rock Concrete is fully insured and ready to make your ideas a reality. Sand Rock Concrete is a proud supporter and sponsor of Mahoning Valley High School Football on Western Reserve Radio. All right, second hit. Second half action coming up here in Lakewood. As the Cobras lead the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders by a score of 14 to 6. Guys out on the field having fun on a night that has kind of cooled off, a little bit overcast now, no rain expected. But uh, a lot colder than it is in the Youngstown area. We yeah. made our way up here. We were putting on air conditioners and opening windows and fans. Well, and we brought a fan here, but really didn't need it tonight. I worked my propane and ran home and grabbed the bologna sandwich. Would that be Gessler propane? That would be in Gessler, Struthers? and we have gas. All right, there we <laughs> go. Welcome to the land, boys. <laughs> yeah. We've been expecting you. <laughs> Say hello to Mark Means. He's working out of his Trumbull County studio. Oh, absolutely. Dave just pointed out that uh, he called a strawberry moon. And boy, is it Indeed, red. Indeed, that's what it is. is. And Beautiful. It's, it's full moon and all the crazies will be out tonight. There's good news. <laughs> we love on the summer nights here at the 216, the sun sets over Lake Erie. Beautiful than ever. <clears throat> Fifteen minutes up on the board here as Cobras will try to get something going offensively again. A lot of defensive work for the Cobras as they get the first touchdown in the first quarter on a Robert Littlejohn strip sack fumble. And Harlan Page picks it up and goes 46 yards into the end zone for the Cobras. Keyshawn Bacot gets the nine-yard reception from Slap Thompson. And the Rough Riders get a block punt. As a kick here will stay on the ground and go down to the 20. Be picked up at the 14-yard line, brought back out to the 25-30. 35 and down to the 39-yard line. It's going to be a horse collar tackle coming up against Cleveland. I believe that's going to be a Sion Kelly Sr. on the tackle. And you can see him go back, and you, and you kind of cringe every time you see that. Yeah, but I don't know if he had him around the collar, Jim. It looked like he had a sleeve uh, over over top of his shoulder pads. and I, It didn't look like he had his hand in actual collar, but... The angle that I'm at, so I don't. I really don't know. So. I think you were right for a moment. I thought the officials were discussing it to make sure they got the call right. right. But I think it was more the angle that he came down at, backwards with his legs under him, that caught their attention. Yeah, but I think they, uh, now, again, not that they ever would, but I think they blew that call. I think because he fell backwards, they thought he had about it, but he didn't. He had him by his shoulder. I had a clear view of that. But, again, I'm not the one that has the stripes. I'm not the one that has a penalty flag. I'm just up here as a smiling face. <laughs> Sorry, that was Jackson Jones that made the tackle, but that will give the Rough Riders good starting field position right at the midfield stripe, 14-53. Third quarter here. We're just getting underway here in the second half. Cobras with a 14-6 lead here in Lakewood. Week one of the Tri-Point Football League. Cobras on the field two weeks ago as they took on West Virginia Leviathan. Struggled a little bit for three quarters. Got together in the fourth quarter. Really started to click. And they pick up the 20-3 win two weeks ago. Cobras will be back in action next week as they will host the Steel City Bobcats right here in Lakewood. As we go, two receivers to the far side, one receiver to the near side. That'll be Chris Williams, Bond in the shotgun, one running back to each side. to be Raven Jones. He'll send him in motion, and he's going to head upfield, but flag on the play. Bond going to take it to the outside, down past the 40, 35, and out of bounds inside the 30, but that's going to come back as Raven Jones turned up field before the snap. Yeah, if he would have just came and, and sat or uh, squared up and then slid, uh, shuffled to the right, that would have been fine. But unfortunately, he attacked the line of scrimmage, and this isn't uh, Canadian football. You cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, the Rough Riders are really having struggling, struggling on, with their offensive line and not really, really able to connect with Bond. And the penalties really start to hurt them. Yeah. 
Every positive yard they have ends up on it with a penalty. Yeah, it's going to be real. It's gonna, to be honest with you, their penalty yards and their yards gained is going to be pretty close. 14-26 on a running clock here, third quarter. Now going to be first down. They'll move the ball back to the 45-yard line, so we'll call it first and 15. This is going to be a key thing for the Rough Riders. Are they going to be able to limit the penalties in this second half compared to the first half? You're absolutely right. How, how much are they going to hurt themselves is Vaughn waits for the snap. Hand off to Raven Jones. He'll, the big man trying to get to the outside. He's going to be cut at the legs and brought down. That's going to be, uh, excuse me, Jacoby Brown on the tackle for the Cobras, and that's going to be a loss of yards for the Rough Riders. They just don't have the speed to get outside that. And not only that, the ends are so quick, they're able to adjust as they're coming in. As soon as they get around them, they're able to flatten back out and be able to uh, come up field and uh, make the tackles for a loss. And Jacoby Brown with that tackle there, he had a great man coverage back in the first half when the Rough Riders went for two, able to block up that pass for the two-point conversion. And Jacoby Brown playing very well here for the Cobras in the early going. You know, Raven Jones, no small man, and Jacoby Brown going low on him, as he should. <laughs> as Bond now in the shotgun. Three-step drop, back to pass, under pressure. Robert Littlejohn wraps him up and puts him down. Second sack of the day for Robert Littlejohn, and it's going to be second and forever for the Rough Riders. They're going to be back near their own 30-yard line. This drive started out at midfield, so they're going to be... Uh, We'll call it second and 30, third and 30 they for were, the Rough Riders. They were so worried about the left side of the defense. They overloaded there and was able to stop them, but they forgot about Robert Little John and another hanger over on this side. And they got those two were standing there. Quarterback saw what was going on, spun, and he had a whole lot of Cobra standing there. The speed of Robert Little John's impressive. And he's already got two sacks today, and you see the enthusiasm and excitement in Little John getting that sack. And that's what the viewers and the fans love to see, that excitement after getting a big sack and a big loss for your team. And Lil John has done great here today for the Cobras. I have a funny feeling he's not done yet. No, and he's not a thick man. I mean, he's tall, but he must be fast as lightning because he is, he's just uh, he's got some sticks on him. When you apply that pressure on the defensive end side, great things will happen. Bond back to pass, rolling out to his right. He's going to take it himself. He'll step up to the 30, he'll fire across the field, almost picked up. It's going to go off the hands and into the hands of a rough rider at the 48-yard line. He'll be brought down at the 46. So, again, another one of those tip drills, Coach, that we act, that you actually practice. Oh, yeah. And it's been paying off for the rough riders. <laughs> you ain't a kidding. I'll tell you what, they've had a couple of tip balls where it should have been picked off, and they end up going right in their lap. I mean, he didn't have to move. It landed right in his lap, and I thought he was going to get a first down out of it, so... So now looking at a, well, we'll see what the marker's going to say here, but six yards to go for a first down. It's stuck between halfway third and fourth down. So yeah, it should be fourth. And I was surprised Bond threw that at the last second. Looks like he saw an open hole, and Bond got away with it. Yeah, because he looked like he could have run. There you are, definitely punting it. Bond now. Oh, they have a snap. It was going to go. To the back to his right, it was going to be a direct snap, but it's going to be a false start against the Rough Riders. And just when they take that one step forward, it's two steps back for him. Yeah, I, well, uh, at the half, Jim, I noticed that uh, I can't get a number that they had a new punter in there, and I was watching him, and he was getting some boomers off. Um, they should have been using him from the beginning of the game, and I don't, I can't get a number. I believe well, it's number 88, but we don't have an 88 on the roster sheet. Okay. Arlen Page will check out for the Cobras. Michael Marshall will check in for the Cobras. 10.28 left here on a running clock. Fourth and 11 now for the Rough Riders. I guess we don't have a play clock. So let me tell you what, the officials are letting them take their time. You're right about that, Coach. <laughs> Seems like they already should got a delay game penalty at this rate. Rough Riders now in a pump formation. High snap be brought down. They'll get it away. It's going to be a high punt. High and short. It'll land just short of the 30-yard line. Take a Rough Rider bounce. Chris Williams right there for the Rough Riders to cover it. And the Cobras will take over first and 10 right around their own 31-yard line. 9.58 left here, third quarter. 
Cobras with a 14-6 lead as they try to put together something offensively to get going here. And it's coming in spurts, so you're seeing a little bit at a time. Yeah, they're uh, on that punt. I, I don't understand. Uh, they're, they need to coach the special teams up on this because their back wall, once they are behind the, the, uh, the line to snap the ball, they should be on the right side, protection side, should be shoulder to shoulder, and then a split for the snap, and then another one there, and they're spread out. And what's happening is, is they're just running in between them, and that they're causing them to uh, punt the ball quick. So they have got to adjust that, uh, we'll say, uh, punt backfield. Thompson in the shotgun, four wide receivers, two to each side. He'll give it to Calhoun. Calhoun cutting back to the inside. Try to break one tackle. May have picked up a yard on the play. It'll be second and nine now for Cleveland. That's a good job. Trying to get a number. 9.48 on a running clock here. Cobras with a 14-6 lead. Their first possession of the second half. If you're the Cobras here, you really want to build off each positive yardage play, trying to make it a three-score game. Or a two-score game, excuse me. Trip receivers now to the near side. Cobra's moving left to right on your devices if you're not watching on Facebook or Twitter. Thompson waiting for the snap. Calhoun to his right. Calhoun looking for the quick pass. Going to just send it out quickly after the 33-yard line and down to the 15-yard line. Abril Taylor with the catch. And it'll give him a little bit of room to work on third down. You start to cut that down, Coach, and it opens up the playbook a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's They're marking it now four, five, five. Okay, now we have four yards. Um, depending on where the defensive backs line up, slant, run a slant. If they got them the inside uh, coverage, that's fine. Run a slant and go or slant, uh, out and up. Um, get, them, get them leaning a little bit. I'd take a shot right here because they haven't done anything – as far as deep, what he got to lose. And that wasn't a bad slant round. Thompson has just got to be more accurate with his throw, not throw it right in the feet of Taylor. I think he hesitated. Absolutely hesitated. And that, that threw the timing off. Thompson now with the radio hand out to Calhoun. Calhoun will be hitting the backfield, but he may have picked up a half a yard on the play. As Emmett Calhoun, the Cobra veteran, trying to find some room between the tackles. And we'll see if the Cobras go for it here. Looks like they will. Well, defensively, that's been their strongest aspect of the game. So if you're Coach Adam Rogerson, you might feel a little comfortable having your defense on the field as opposed to maybe some of your special teams, which will get better as Thompson now going to come back out on the field. Now remember, he, he did have the quick kick. So there's an opportunity for that as well again. And they'll do it from the huddle. 7.44 left here in this third quarter. Do a little bit where they look like he's going to punt and then hesitate and throw the ball. Angelo Thompson will be the receiver to the far side. Twin receivers to the near side. And one wing to the left. Calhoun to the left of Thompson. Thompson in the shotgun. He'll take his time. Thompson fires over the middle. Going to be complete. Out to the 45-yard line and down at the 48-yard line. Eddie Edwards on the catch. Another Cobra veteran. All he did was is he went a little slant, sat down in the hole. He knew exactly where he needed to be. They worked that out and saw it. Right back to the line now. Same formation, trip receivers to the right. Thompson going to pass that out to Edwards again. Edwards going to get into Rough Rider territory. He'll be down at the 49-yard line. And they're going to go right back to the line. Up-tempo offense here for the Cobras. 6.54 on a running clock here. Cobras lead the game 14-6. And I like this Cobra strategy right here. Tire, your, tire the defense out. Do a little quick two-minute drill. Get back on the scoreboard. Twin receivers on the far side. The slot receiver, no covers. The safety will shift over. Thompson going to keep the ball on the read. Get out to the 45 and down near the 40-yard line. They'll give him the 41. No, nope, they'll give him the 40. It'll be first and 10 for the Cobras. And at Cleveland going right back to the line. Up-tempo offense, not giving the Rough Riders an opportunity to substitute at all. Offensive coordinator, he's, he's winding the clock. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thompson in the shotgun. And Calhoun back there with him. Receivers two by two. Thompson stepping up in the pocket under pressure. And he's going to be brought down in the backfield. We don't know who made the sack. It'll be number 25 for the Rough Riders, but... And I, and I want to tell you something, Jim. I don't know who he is, but he's, he's made some magnificent plays um, this whole game. Unfortunately, we, we just don't know who he is, and he's doing a heck of a job. 
5.55 left here in the third quarter. We talked that the up-tempo offense was doing it, wearing out the defense, not letting them substitute. Sometimes you have that issue, though. Maybe you got to take a step back, maybe, you know, get, re get reset. Well, that was a big loss for the Cobra. So, like you said, Jim, they want to reset and get back and focus up here, get another positive yardage, positive gain, and move down the field. As for the Rough Riders, they did a great job with that blitzing call there, both of the defensive ends coming in on Thompson. Second and 15 now for the Cobras. Receivers two by two. Thompson seven yard deep in the shotgun. He'll move Calhoun to his right. 5-13 here as Slap Thompson waits for the snap. Three step drop, stepping up there under pressure. He's gonna find the middle of the field, still looking downfield, and it's gonna be thrown into the turf. That ball intended for Keyshawn Bacote, who had the touchdown earlier in the first half. We've always taught if you're going to scramble, receivers have got to come back to him. He didn't. He's trying to make things happen. That's where mistakes go. You've got to be able to attack the line of scrimmage if you're rolling. Attack it, settle square up, and get the arm square. You, he drifted a little bit right and tried to hit a receiver who, need again, your quarterback scrambling right, you go right, you try to get to him. And I think he rushed that throw a bit. I think he was worried about the pressure behind him, and that's what forced that bad throw. Trip receivers to the far side now. Antonio Boyd will be the lone receiver to the near side. Thompson waiting for the snap. 428 left here, a little bit high. Thompson will keep the ball, was on the read. Try to work around EJ Bibbs, but too many white jerseys and Thompson will be brought down at the 48-yard line on the Rough Rider side of the field. And in back-to-back -back plays, things kind of stalling out for the Cleveland offense. Well, definitely both offensive coordinators got a lot of work this week coming up because their defenses aren't playing bad, but they have no offense going on. Again, second game, preview last week, still counted, but again, you know, they got to get better. They got to start clicking. 348 left here in this third quarter. And Savon Gibson will make his way onto the field for the Cobras. Devere Glenn now will be the defensive end to the far side. And there's a little bit of confusion on the personnel. Terrell Lively. Will make his way onto the field for Cleveland. And we're going to have a delay of game. Or an illegal substitution, excuse me. Mm -hmm. As players were kind of hesitant, they're counting them up now. But Yeah, I counted 12. So not, so, not such a horrible mistake there. As you're just moving back five yards on the punt. But as the way the kicking game has gone today, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. that's where the concern comes. And it looks like the Cobras are just struggling, struggling to communicate on special teams in general. That's what caused that penalty there. They got to learn throughout the season to communicate better to get the players on and off the field during a special teams play. It, you know, it's hard, too, and I'll tell you why. When you're coaching here, a lot of guys don't want to go back out on special teams. So you have to designate a coach, which we did, always have the special teams and always had his backups ready. I believe Harlan Page is now going to be the punter. He was responsible for the first Cleveland touchdown in the first quarter. Picking up a fumble, going 46 yards. Low snap on the ground, but he's going to be able to recover it. And a there good high go. kick by the Cobras down to the 36-yard line. It'll take a Cobra roll down to the 30-yard line. And it'll be downed by Sam Bullock. And finally, the Cobras get a well-executed punt, courtesy of Harlan Page. Snap, punt. There was no hesitation. I also noticed that he was much further back than where they were setting the rest of the punters. The punters looked like they were a little close to the line. So. Yeah, and I, and I believe we'd always like to go 12, 13 yes, yards. absolutely. But in, unfortunately, it looks like the snap kind of still hit the yeah. ground, skimmed a little bit, able to recover well. But Well, uh, we always had a good long snapper. Well, I tell you, long snappers are hard to find. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I had a good one, you know, occasionally. It's it always usually be. a quarterback or you know, a backup quarterback <laughs> or a receiver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lawn snapper for the Cobras, Steve Anthony, just kind of like skimmed it across the turf for that punt there. Fortunately, it was a good spiral. He was able to yeah. scoop it from the bottom. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that skimming it back like that as long as it gets there because that football's oval, and it'll make some crazy rolls. 
2.26 left here, third quarter. Cleveland with the 14 to six lead over Mahoning Valley. Rough Riders taking over first and 10 at their own 30 yard line. On now in a shotgun, one running back to each side. You have two twin receivers to the far side, moving right to left on your devices. You have Zaire Graham be the receiver to the near side. Vaughn now, he'll send one running back for a trips formation to the far side. Vaughn now firing quickly out in the middle, almost picked off, but caught. And it's gonna be brought out to the 38 yard line, near the 40, we'll see where they spot it. And if I'm not mistaken, that looked like Jacoby Brown took a chance on that interception, just couldn't come up with it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and then I don't want, I'm not sure which defensive back took a ride. <laughs> he jumped on the back of that bowl, and he took, he took him for a ride, so. Well, and you hope for some help from your friends. <laughs> yeah, in that <laughs> instance, I think he had him by 100 pounds. You know, in, in situations like that, though, you get there, and, you know, it's just too late at that yeah, point. Yeah, you know, and he had a head of steam, and, of course, the DB just caught him, and he just didn't have enough uh, anchor, we'll say, <laughs> behind him. Second and two now for the Rough Riders. have the ball at their own 38-yard line. One receiver to each side of a wing to the right. Two running backs to each hip of Bond. On out with the handoff, trying to find room out to the left side. And it'll be brought down at the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a yard on that. And that was going to be Zaire Graham on the carry. And Graham did a good job of trying to use his shoulder to get some extra yardage there, but just great tackling from the Cobras to stop him in his tracks. So third and one for the Rough Riders. And this is where they've struggled, either with penalties or tackles for, or excuse me, plays for loss. This is why you get underneath center. In this offense, you get under, under center and all you do is, is how we used to do it, just slap his rear end and that center knew that everybody else don't move, silent count, and he can get that. We've had Withrow <laughs> run a few. Under a minute here left in this third quarter. Cleveland with a 14-6 to six lead. One receiver to each side. On in the shotgun. Cobra showing pressure. Vaughn rolling out to his right, looking downfield. And he's going to pick up the first down past the 45, reaching near midfield, and he'll go down at the midfield stripe. And that's going to be Kev Fortson, and it will finally bring him down, and that will be a Rough Riders first down. I'll tell you what, he is. He, he, this young man has got good speed, good size. He, you can see he is an athlete and a football player. He really uh, does a great job. The only thing that I don't like is he carries that uh, that ball out way out like a loaf of bread, and someone's going to get it because that's I would notice that as a defensive player. And when he threw that arm out, I'm either beating his arm up or I'm going to attack that football. Yeah, you're right about that, coach. He's got to cuff that up into his chest, and he really turned on the Jets to beat the defensive back Michael Marshall. Vaughn with the handoff past midfield down to the 45-yard line. That'll be second and five now. For the Rough Riders, actually, they'll give them the 46-yard line, so second and six. I'll stop the clock here as we reach the end of the third quarter here in Lakewood. Cleveland Cobras lead by a score of 14 to six over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. We're going to step aside for a timeout. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the I Media One Network. We're back after this. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Come out to the 36th beautiful hole design course by Donald Ross, and golf lessons are available by calling the team shop at 330-740-7112. Don't forget about family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings, a family of four with cart for only $25. Or visit the Wick Recreation Area and the lighted Part 3 course. Book your tee time today at 330-740-7112 or online at millcreekmetroparks.org. Blah, blah, blah. Fifteen minutes up here on the board. Final frame here in Lakewood. Cleveland with a 14-6 lead over the Mahoning Valley. Rough Riders will switch sides of the field. Cleveland will move right to left now. Rough Riders left to right. You know, we were talking about running the ball and holding it out like a loaf of bread. Why well, I used to teach the running backs on the offense is do the, do the tiki barber. Tip of the ball is underneath your chin. You set it between on your breastplate so the tip is under your chin and shooting at your feet. And then you cross over with the other arm before you get hit, and that ball ain't going nowhere. 
nowhere. And you'd be surprised how many times quarterbacks get strip sacked by just holding the football out in near space. It happens more times than you think, especially in the NFL. Yeah, because quarterbacks should be getting it, and it should be right in the center of them, both hands on it, and and close to them with their elbows bent. Because then yeah, you start putting that thing out there, it's a swat and go. Even when you're setting up, you've got to keep that in. in. Second and six now for the Rough Riders at the Cobra 46-yard line. As we get underway here in the fourth quarter, Bond in a shotgun, one running back to each side. He'll send one in motion from right to left. Bond now out, running out to the left side, trying to find room, trying to get to the outside, going to beat Devere Glenn, and he'll go out of bounds past the 40 and down to the 39-yard line. They'll say no, he went out at the 41-yard line. Okay, we'll, we'll give him that. As the officials, uh, no, they'll go back to the 40 now. <laughs> It's like that guy in uh, The Price is Right. It's you go, you go yeah. up there and then down a little bit. Well, it's just left and right foot. That's all. I mean, it's just... So it'll be first and ten for the Depending right. on your stride, I guess. It could be, you know, 40, 41, 39. First and ten now for the Rough Riders at the Cobra 40-yard line. We'll get it right. That's all right. Well, we have to wait for them. 14-6 to six is the Cleveland Cobra lead. So you can hear the Cobra sideline. Somewhat animated there, Jared, I would oh. say. <laughs> there you go. They, they have to, to figure out something to stop Bond. Bond now with the handoff on the counter. And nowhere to go. You know, Jim, you know what they need to run, Jim. They need to run 44 <laughs> scissors. I'm telling you. they got they, Everybody scrapes out there. They got to hand that thing coming back down this way. Run If they run more counters, but you got to have one guy going right, another guy going left. I mean, that crossfire, whatever, run that. But it's got to be quick. It's just too much delay. Well, they're going to say, actually, he went out of bounds yeah. at the 42-yard line. So second and 12 for the Rough Riders. 13.45 on a running clock here in the fourth quarter. Week one of the Tri-Point Football League. Try to, we were hoping to get you some scores from around the league, but we don't see anything so far. Don't be shy, folks. Go ahead and send them scores in. We're, we'll we be well appreciative. So Bond now in the shotgun, one running back to his left, three receivers to the near side. Bond now stepping up, they're under pressure, and he's going to be brought down at the 49-yard line on the Rough Riders' side of the field. They'll actually give him the 50, so another loss of five. And Cleveland's defense has stood up all game long. It's been a tough way to go for Frank Bond. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's struggling a bit, there's no doubt. That was Andy, it looked like Andy Cohn. Code, the Cleveland veteran. As we have a player down for the Rough Riders, he's going to take a knee, maybe got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, I believe that was number one. Kyrie Dennis was limping on the sideline. Not sure what he did on his route, if he cut too hard. And you see that a lot nowadays with wide receivers on turf especially. They try to do a route, and they're not even being covered that hard, and they injure themselves. Well, and, and I think a lot of guys have talked about in the NFL was playing on the turf. They actually are lobbying to go back to grass in the NFL. So we don't know if there's something to that. or. And, and it, you know, what's funny is back in the day, they thought that the turf was going to protect their legs and knees more. But they found out later on after they started doing all this, they saved a ton of money because they didn't have to worry about the fields and being muddy and this. But the problem with this is, and we've all played on it or coached on it, man, when you step, it, that, that foot stays right where it's at. So you get a lot of knee injuries, a lot of ankle injuries, and then coming down on this, you know, this, this stuff's pretty cushioned with the ground, the ground tires in it, but that, that, you're still hitting pretty hard. Yeah, you talk about non-contact injuries, and we have seen quite a bit of those, and this is what they believe now is contributing to it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're bigger, stronger, faster, but, you know, bigger bodies and with the weightlifting and everything, but it's all about the tendons and joints. You can't build them up. It's impossible. So you're putting these bigger bodies, and now you're stepping on this thing. you got nothing to give but your, bo your joints. And honestly, unless you live in Seattle, I think yeah. you really need turf everywhere, yeah. especially in Ohio. 12.34 here on a running clock. Back to action here. We have trip receivers to the near side. Bond in the shotgun. It'll be third in an eternity from the Cobras 49-yard line. Bond now rolling out to his right, looking downfield. 
stepping up, going to fire a wobbly pass towards the sideline, and it's going to be thrown out of bounds. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Rough Riders. There is a flag on the play. There are three flags, so the officials obviously have either agreed on something or we have multiple violations as we look to our referee for some clarification. They're by the line of scrimmage, so maybe a hold. So we're going to have procedure. an illegal procedure against Mahoning Valley, a hold against the Rough Riders. So either way, that's going to be a 10-yard penalty. And it will be fourth and even longer now for the Rough Riders. They'll be well back on their own side of the field. They're better off just, uh, well, I guess they're going to decline it? Yeah, they're going to decline the penalties and elect for fourth down. Yep. So okay. Not a bad decision. <laughs> I don't know. I probably, my opinion, I, I might have taken a chance with that and moved them back and told the uh, defense, pin your ears back, boys. Let's go get him. Well, while we have the opportunity, we want to congratulate Cleveland Cobra's athletic trainer, Beth Bettencourt. She is a grandmother again this week. A new baby girl, so we want to congratulate her on the addition to the family. Uh, she tries to keep all these guys upright. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is this can be a uh, I don't want to use the word violent, but it's a it's a high it collision it's level physical. of football. It is violent. It is. We've seen it. I mean, it's they go out there. They want to win. So we'll see how many miracles she can do as the Rough Riders will line up in punt formation. Good snap, and it'll be off this time, and it'll go to the left side, land right around the 27-yard line. It'll take a roll. Going to be touched by a Cobra and picked up by a Rough Rider. It's going to be advanced to the 20. 10, 15, touchdown, Mahoning Valley Rough Riders, but I don't know if you can advance a muffed punt, Coach. Um, but it, I, Did it ever touch the ground? I never touched the ground, so I don't know. We'll see what the call is by the official. I'm not sure. They're, ta they're discussing it. I don't know if they're giving it to them on the 30. So if this is a muff punt, I don't believe they're going to be able to advance yep. it, but we'll see. Yeah, it's 30. They're marking it on 30, Jim. Okay, so it will be a muff punt. Cleveland. The, the Cobras escape what could have been a terrible touchdown for the Rough Riders, but I don't even know why you would touch that in that situation anyway. Just let the ball roll. Run. <laughs> poison, poison. Get away from it. Get out of the way. 11.06 left here on a running clock. Cobra's defense back on the field. Rough Riders will have the ball in Cobra territory. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. Here as the lights are now on in the stadium. Sun getting ready to go down. As we saw the strawberry moon. Is that what you called it there, Coach? Uh, that, no, that was on uh, that Mr. They, Ferris. Is that said, what they called strawberry. it? Okay. Strawberry moon, Mr. Ferris. He says yes. So between barbecue and now. strawberries. <laughs> We definitely get to find a milkshake right now. We, this, we need our own concession stand. This is what happens when you don't eat dinner before well, the games. This is Cleveland. There's food up here. <laughs> Vaughn back to pass, stepping up in the pocket. Going to fire out to his left, looking downfield. One-on-one, -on -one, they're going to be picked off by the Cobras at the five-yard line. Can't get a number on that as they're... And they're going to say, indeed, it is Cleveland Cobras' ball. Look I, who the corner was to the far side. One-on-one -on -one out there. Vaughn just launched it up. Yeah, and he didn't get enough behind it because it fell short. He throws it to the to the back of the end zone. He's got it. I believe that's going to be Jacoby Brown on the interception. If not, he's just a really happy defensive back. I think that was number 12, uh, Kevron. Kev Forsen. Forsen. Okay. And that was great for him to cut inside to force that interception. And that's great for the Cobras after that month punt to get back on the offensive side and try to make it a two-score advantage. And really, you want to get your defense off the field. They've been on there a long time. Yeah, you want to, you want to get, have your defense rest up and put your foot on the gas pedal offensively. And second turnover for the Rough Riders. Now, and the Cobras defense doing a great job tonight. Now you pin your ears back. You tell them, them ends, you've got to come in there. And uh, you got to wrap up, try to get a safety here. First and 10 now at the five-yard line. 10-25 left here in this game. <laughs> Cobras with 95 yards to go to the end zone. Thompson in the shotgun. His feet will be placed right at the goal line. It'll be a handoff to Emmett Calhoun. He'll be brought down in the backfield, but his momentum will bring him out. Won't be a safety there. And it will bring him second down for the Cobras. Got him on about the three. Do we, from our angle, it looks like the three. Two or three. Yeah, they'll give him forward progress there. And good. Uh, 
defensively by the Rough Riders on the rush. Yeah, and I think Coach is right. It's going to be second down now and call it 12 from the three-yard line. Got to be very careful here. Cobras now with twin receivers to the far side, twin receivers to the near side. Thompson in the shotgun, now in the end zone, waiting for the snap. He'll hand off, try to get some room to work up front, get maybe back out to the five-yard line, and it'll bring up third and ten for the Cobras. And Cobras playing very conservative, conservatively at this point. Yeah, because the slot receiver on our side was not covered. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if even him just pick and, and throw it, he could have possibly been uh, still running. It would have been one-on-one. -on -one. 9-13 left here. 9-13 left here in the fourth quarter. And if the Cobras here, do you just go with another run and you try to get a quick slant, well, get some yards, and get the first down? It depends on the defense. Right now, looks like they're playing zone coverage. You're just going to end up having to get what you get. I think a swing out of the backfield maybe. Cobras, the twins receivers to the far side. Thompson back to pass, going to fire out to his right. It's going to be caught. At the 16-yard line, that should be enough for a Cleveland first down. First down. He, all he did, the inside, inside receiver, all he did was run a – he got the sticks, and then he curled in and sat down. That was a great job Mr. by – Mr. Edwards. That was a great job by Eddie being Edwards to get the catch there in the first down for the Cobras. And they go into that slant, that slant route. Yeah, they, he slants, the, the DB bails, and then he sits down. He knew exactly where he had to go for a first down. He did an outstanding job. <coughs> Twin receivers to the far side now. I have one single receiver to the near side. Thompson now with the handoff to take Ooh. it out. To, Thompson's going to pull the ball, keep it himself out, past the 25, down at the 26-yard line. That'll be a pickup of six. That'll be now third and four for the Cobras. What the woo was you heard from the crowd was is um, he pulled it, and as he pulled it, the running back got absolutely drilled in the backfield. Yeah, he got drilled on the right side on, on the one knee, and he's lucky he's okay. That's a tough hit to take. Well, they're moving all back one yard, so it'll be second and five. For the Cobras, 741 left here in this game. Cleveland. Trying to run the clock down, get in the end zone one more time. They'll go four wide receivers, two by two. Thompson now in the shotgun. One high safety for the Rough Riders. Quick pass out to the outside. and Tackle almost made at the 25. It'll break loose. And that was going to be Keyshawn Bacote, who's going to be brought down in the backfield for a loss. And it's hard to see from up here in the booth, but looked like a possible face mask from the Rough Riders. I mean, it's so hard with three people tackling you at once to see. They actually had, if, if, if they had a run to get the first down in the same pattern where it was kind of a slat, uh, slant and sat down, only if he didn't even have to do that. He could have went straight up the field and sat down. He would have got the first down because I don't know why they threw it back. It was a bad call, bad play. T.J. Johnson now to the left of Thompson. Receivers two by two. Second and eight. Thompson back to pass, looking out to his left, going to step up in the pocket, going to fire over the middle of the field. But Keyshawn Bacot's going to fall down, couldn't get to the ball. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I'll tell you what, though, he doesn't fall down. He's got him wide open coming across the middle. I don't think there's any question at this point. you got to punt the ball away, Coach. Oh, yeah. 6.37 left here in the game, and you are kind of a razor-thin lead here. One mistake. And the Rough Riders are right back in this. They're going to bring the big boy, Harlan Page, to point it away again. He did a good job the last time. High and got some distance. Yeah, just make sure we got to get that snap because if he bobbles, this could be deadly. Steve Anthony, the long snapper for the Cleveland Cobras punt team. They'll have Deion Carr and Sam Bullock as the guards to his left and right. Steve Anthony's a wide receiver, so even though you're not allowed to touch the center, it's nice to have those guards right next to you step down. Yeah, but you could create a little havoc in the middle, too, doing that. Harlan Page now back at the 15-yard line. Good snap. You know, get this one away. A good nice. punt. You'll have to backpedal for this. It'll land at the 43-yard line. It'll be picked up at the 37. And brought down at the 36-yard line. Marcus Brown on the return. Nowhere to go. 
And Harlan Page doing a great job flipping sides of the field for the Cobras. That's a great job. I'll tell you what, he got that ball. They, I like it. Big kid. Um, catch the ball, get it out of there. And there is no hesitation getting some good snaps now. <clears throat> Outstanding job there. First and 10 now for the Rough Riders. 531 left here in this game. They'll place the ball at the 35-yard line. 65 yards to go for Mahoning Valley. They're looking to tie this game up. Now I'm telling my ends, I'm telling my ends, keep that quarterback with inside, come up field, kind of square in, and I'd have a linebacker as a spy and say, keep because He's the one that's doing everything, so he's going to do the most damage. So you've got to have a spy in the center of that field, so when he goes left, you're going right, his left. Anthony Neal and Robert Littlejohn will be the defense, <clears throat> defensive ends for the Cobras, and you're right, Coach. Can't let him get too deep into the backfield as Bond will line up in the shotgun. He'll have Raven Jones to his left, three receivers to the far side. On now, taking the ball out to the left side, looking to get upfield. He'll get past the 35, out to the 40. 45, and he'll go out of bounds near the midfield stripe. That should be a first down as we have a little extracurricular activity going there. Robert Littlejohn and Andy Code going to try to get him out of there, but flags on the play. I don't know if these are going to be offsetting or not. They again, what are you thinking? Okay, you made a beautiful block. He turned his hips, sealed him inside. Let him go. What's he going to do, hurt you? So guess what? Now it could cost you 15 yards going the other way on a great run. So I would personally, I would say offsetting. So dead ball foul, personal foul against the Rough Riders, and that's not going to be offsetting. Nope. So... Honing Valley will be set back 15 yards. That will not make their task any easier. That's just that's just not thinking. That's just letting your emotions get to you, and you can't do that playing football. And, and if you're Frank Bond, you're running all over the field, probably has over 200 yards of rushing, if not close to it, and you did all that work for nothing. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it's just silly. Can't do that. 523 <clears throat> left here in this game, and again, Rough Riders again in a, in a eternity situation as far as down and distance. One step forward, two steps back for Mahoning Valley. That has been the trend of the day as I believe the Cobras maybe taking a timeout. Um, I believe Jesse walked out onto the field to call that timeout, and I don't blame him, and I know what he's telling him. Don't mess up. Don't let your emotions get you. Shut up and play the game, and I believe that's what he did because the whole team's coming out there. Don't let it get out of hand. Yeah, certainly in a close game like this, you don't want to put yourself in a position that you didn't have to, really, because of just temperament. Yeah, I just, I, I, you know what? Play the game. Don't let your emotions get in there. Do your job, and that's it. Someone, and, and I always say, if someone's going to take a swipe at you, let them. What are they going to do, hurt you? Well, I always say thank you for 15 yards. Yeah, you know, personally. I, and my rule was always, always through school, is you, when, when somebody says something to you, wink at them. And blow them a kiss. I guarantee you they're going to okay, get 15 Okay, first of all, Coach, yards. that was a little weird. But <laughs> no, but, that, but it worked. It absolutely worked. I don't know, Jared. Coming from I the mean, ice, we spent nine months, you know, with yeah, this. I don't, I don't and think, all you got was a two-minute penalty. Yeah, I don't think the hockey players are going to wink and kiss at someone. <laughs> you blow them a kiss, believe me, it might, was working might, might, uh, many a time. Give them a special sign language. But other than that, I don't think they're going to do anything else. The John Padulo treatment. Former yeah. Youngstown Phantom, for those who aren't yep. you know, up to date here. Now it works because what it does is it ticks them off because they're expecting retaliation. You do that, and they go after you, and it's 15 yards. I don't know. I think of Strathman Whitelaw, somebody. <laughs> right, right. You, well, you, you get away them, with they'll, it. They'll go for it, you especially can, Chase Patilla, too. Yes. You go, you're go. you able to do that in hockey. You can't fight out And it's here. just a two-minute timeout. You go sit down, you think about your indiscretions, and then you get free. I mean, yeah, and then you get a, do it again. about it. <laughs> <laughs> 523 left here as we talk about the USHL's 2023 Clark Cup champions. The Youngstown fans heard all that action right here on Western Reserve Radio. And Dave, Jared, and I, and Bob, we are worn out from that season. That was a long season as the Rough Riders have come out three receivers to the far side. Bond now rolling out to his left, looking downfield under pressure. He's going to be brought down in the backfield down at the 26-yard line. That'll be a loss of four. 
And I believe this time it's going to be Chris Frazier with the sack. He had one two weeks ago against the West Virginia Leviathan, and he gets another one tonight, I believe. Oh, I could be wrong. I believe that was not number two. I'm sorry. Is it number nine? These numbers are hard to see. Twelve. <laughs> Well, it looked like it was Frazier because he was so pumped up about the defensive right. stop. So, but Nonetheless. <laughs> it was one of them. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it, some guy with a two on And, it, and I will numbers. say that the, the Cobras have been playing team defense. Everybody's getting to the ball. Sometimes it really is hard to call this. Yeah, it is. And it's a good thing to see. But So far early in this Cobra season, they definitely are communicating better on the defensive side than the offensive side of the ball. Receivers two by two now for the Honing Valley Rough Riders. Bond now in the shotgun, 420 on a running clock. Bond, three-step drop, stepping up in the pocket. Has some room to run, trying to direct traffic downfield. He's got a man open, and it's going to be caught at the 35. And it's going to be taken away, and it's going to be on the ground. Ball's loose. Officials in there trying to find it. Rough Riders say they have it. And they're going to say, and indeed they do. So that's going to be a pickup down to the 30-yard line. Call it a fumble or a reception. They'll mark the ball at the 29-yard line. In Cobra territory, Bond had a ton of time there. I don't know, Jim. I, <laughs> I, I thought that could have been an incompletion because I you had to have control in two or three steps leading in on your rush there. So that possibly could have been an incompletion. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, Dave, could you look at that screen and uh, we could radio. You want to no, run back. Do that. <laughs> want to run the replay back there, Dave? Because it, that was a bang, bang play. So 335 yeah, I, left here in this game. Rough Riders. We'll take a timeout here, and we're going to step aside for a quick break, catch our breath. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the iMedia One Network. We're back after this. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Come out to the 36th beautiful hole design course by Donald Ross, and golf lessons are available by calling the team shop at 330-740-7112. Don't forget about family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings, a family of four with cart for only $25 or visit the Wick Recreation Area and the Lighted Part 3 course. Book your tee time today at 330-740-7112 or online at millcreekmetroparks.org. Three thirty-three left here, fourth quarter. Honing Valley Rough Riders with a big play. They'll have the ball first and ten. At the Cobras 29 yard line. Cobras lead 14 to 6. Mahoning Valley within striking distance now. As the Cobras look to go 2 and 0 on this very early season. This will be the first try point game of the season for them. However, get them getting the win two weeks ago against the West Virginia Leviathan over at Walsh University in Canton. Walsh University doing a great job with their new stadium over there. A very beautiful facility. Division II football. For the Cavaliers, as Bond now will have three receivers to the near side. Bond now with a running back to his right. He'll roll around to the right. Trying to throw it back. Had a man open, oh. overthrew him. And it'll be second and ten now for the Rough Riders. Yeah, that's what they got to do. They, uh, and they bottled him in. He had nowhere to go. Stayed in their lanes, kept him inside. And therefore, the de let the defensive backs take over from there. And that's, that was a good job. They put heat, and he couldn't see where uh, the receiver was, and hence he overthrew it. This could be a, <clears throat> this could be a good te test for the Cobras' defense here. This is really the first time all game that they, the, the Rough Riders have been close to red zone territory. And this will be a real challenge for their defense. Well, just keep heat on that quarterback. Because his throws, other than a couple of deep ones, it seems like his slants and stuff, I don't know. He just can't get it there. So get heat on him, but box him in. 327 left here in the game. Bond in the shotgun. One running back to his right. Three receivers to the near side. One to the far side. Bond rolling out to his right. Looks like he wants to run. He'll find the lane. Get out to the 25. Out to the 20-yard line. 15. And be out close near to the 10-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. And they'll say he went out at the 12-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Rough Riders. With 3.20 left here in this game. And the Rough Riders probably with their best drive of the evening so far. Again, 
a good job on the outside. I tell you what, they sealed um, the Cobras in on the right side, and that's why he was able to roll out and do what he's got to do. So the offensive line has done a nice job on this drive. And Zier Graham had a really good block on that right side. Vaughn now in the backfield. He held one running back to his left, one to his right. Twin receivers to the near side, one single receiver to the far side. Vaughn with the handoff trying to get to the outside. He'll make it to the 10-yard line inside the 10. And down near the 5-yard line, we'll see where they mark it out of bounds. And he'll say he went out near the 7-yard line. So they can still get a first down inside the 3 with 2.59 here on a running clock. Cobras 14, the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders 6. Critical drive for the Rough Riders. The best they can do now is tie this game as we approach the two and a half minute mark here in the fourth quarter of week one. Vaughn now will bring the Rough Riders to the line. Twin receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Vaughn now in a max protection offense, one running back to each side. Mike Vaughn now with the read, trying to bring it off the left side, makes a move, trying to get to the outside, but he'll be brought down in the backfield for a loss, at least of a couple yards. I was just pointing to Dave, saying he's going to go left. They overlooked, because of the formation, they slid down to the right side of the offense. There was a ha one hanger over there, and I'll tell you what, I knew they were going to go left. They were going to fake right, go left with quarterback keep, and the and uh, I did, who made that tackle, Jim? Chris Frazier, number oh. two for the Cobras. Okay, he came up because there was they had sealed off Little John, and uh, somebody come up on that outside and was one on one. He did an outstanding job on that tackle. That I knew he was going that way. He gave the defense gave him that, but they did an outstanding job on that side and sealed him up. So the Rough Riders trying to eat this clock up. One twenty eight as it moves, and. We're going to have a timeout, I believe. Not sure who took it, as we can't see here. I believe the Rough Riders took the timeout. Okay, so we'll keep it right here. 124 left here in this game. Cobras with a 14-6 lead. The Rough Riders really making a good showing for themselves today, playing a physical, fast game. Again, mistakes marring them offensively with the penalties and the turnovers. Yeah, they did it. They uh, they straightened it out at halftime. I'll give them that. They look uh, they look a lot better offensively the, with their drives and stuff, and what they did up front. So their talk offensive at halftime has has uh, they've improved. They still got to get a lot better, but they're doing a good job. But uh, again, they're taking what the Cobras will give them. One twenty-four left here in the timeout. Next week we'll be right back here in Lakewood as the Cobras will host the Steel City Bobcats. Bobcats coming. Oh, this will be their first year in the TriPoint Football League. TriPoint in their second season of play. A lot of good things going on for TriPoint. Well, this is this is uh, we got second and. Well, second and one for the first down here. Vaughn now in a shotgun, one running back to his right. Trip receivers to the near side. As Vaughn now rolling out to his right on the move, stepping up, fires over the middle, has a receiver open. It's going to be knocked away in the secondary, and it's going to be Chris Frazier again with the big play. He threw into triple coverage, and uh, it looked like that uh, the receiver was going to get come down with that because I'll tell you what, he leaped, and it was above everybody. But there was some good defensive backs got in there and pulling hands and swatting at balls. So that was a good job. I think the intended receiver there was number 11, Carl Dale. 118 left here in this game. Rough Riders. I believe that was an old Green Bay Packer, Carol Dale, at one time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe it's going to be fourth down for Mahoning Valley. Unfortunately, our markers turn and go halfway. and So, indeed, it will be fourth down for the Rough Riders. Of twin receivers to the near side. Juan now in a shotgun. They'll have a tight end. 
excuse me, slot to the right. One single receiver to the far side. Vaughn, three-step drop, firing out of the corner of the end zone, and it's going to be knocked away by the Cobras. Two defenders went up for it, and they may have cost each other the interception, but a great play and a turnover on downs. It's a great, great play. And that I don't understand why Bond threw that in double coverage, especially playing man, and just not a great throw by Bond. Well, I'm thinking that his receiver could probably out jump him, but he didn't. And uh, ball was there, but uh, there was no way you done double coverage you were going to get that. Yeah, safety shifting over, getting the coverage for the Cobras, and they will take over first and ten. Now, this should just be a couple of knees because they can't stop. Well, I don't know how many timeouts they got, but. 112 left here in this game. Cobras have the ball first and 10 at their own 13 yard line. Cobras looking to close this one out in a close one. 14 to 6 is your score. Thompson now in the shotgun. We go off Johnson to his right. Receivers two by two. Thompson with the handoff. Going to find room up the middle. Pass to 15. And he'll be knocked backwards. As Ford Progress will give him the 16-yard line. Pick up a three. It'll be second and seven. And the Rough Riders took a timeout, so I believe they have one left. And they're going to keep as much clock as they can here. But if you're the Cobras, you should be able to run out the clock. Maybe you need to get one first down to end this. Well, if they have one, if they have one timeout left, they should be able to run the. It's going to be close. Coach Pringle out there taking that timeout. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, Jim. Dave Pringle, the former Western Reserve Scourge member. What Dave, a great guy too. Yeah. He was he he was a player, and he uh, you know what? Never heard him complain. Played in the, no, not at all. Great Never. teammate, and yep. uh, played the 2017 season with the Scourge. Also played the 2015 season in which they won the OFL championship there in Girard at Arrowhead Stadium. Fun to be had by all. It's hard to think, Coach. It's been eight years. How about that? Eight years, and Dave was kind enough to bring his contraption in to clean my ring today. So, <laughs> although That's, You're waiting for the other one. Well, here's the, here's the problem. I, don't, I can't get that ring on so easily anymore. So. See, mine's the opposite. I lost weight, and it keeps falling off. I didn't say it was a weight gain, Coach. I, <laughs> I was you, thinking, why are you suing well, things, Coach? I, yeah, well, thanks, Well, you said Jared. it was too, but you said it was too tight. What's that mean? Well, I think, you know, it's been broken fingers. You know, things don't heal <laughs> his, right. His fingers could have grown. That's a long walk home, Coach. Be nice. Thompson in the shotgun. Receivers two by two. And we're going to have some movement up front. And they're going to say encroachment against the Rough Riders. That should be enough. Well, it won't be enough for a first downs, but it'll be a little bit closer. Probably don't have to change the play, Coach, if you're five yards closer to that marker. 106 left here in this first quarter. Week one of the Tri-Point Football League. The Cobras trying to close this one out. Thompson in the shotgun. He'll... Have one running back to his right, T.J. Johnson. Thompson, pump fake, looking downfield, going to be brought down in the backfield. And not sure what the, what the call was supposed to be on that, but that's a big, big risk to take on, su on such a short field in a close game. He was going to throw the ball. I mean, I, I did. Whew. Just under a minute left here in the fourth quarter, and wow. <laughs> I, I know it's the first week, gentlemen, but both quarterbacks have not made good, quick decisions tonight, and that was one of them right there. Now, I know, Jim, you'll back me on this one, but I know your, your head coach sometimes made some bonehead calls, but that would, <laughs> that would not have been a good one. Ah, that's just, yeah, yay. Take the ball, hold it, and run. I don't even like handing the ball off. 58 seconds left here in this one. As another timeout is taken. Rough so was that their last? Do you, I'm sorry, Jim. Was that their last? Do we even know how many timeouts? That was, that was the Rough Riders' last timeout. Yeah, let's say okay. they lost count there, but. Okay. So, so, they, third so down. they don't have any more. So they can pretty much run out the clock. That should happen. 
So they'll need two plays for that. Well, I don't know. They're going to need two plays for that. It's going to be third and seven, I believe, from this angle. Holden. Thompson now in the shotgun. Mm. He'll be in an empty formation now. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Thompson looking for the open field. Looking down there. Has a guy open and couldn't hit him at the 40-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. He was looking for T.J. Johnson. And if they had connected, that would have been six for the Cobras. However, overthrows him. And, again, both quarterbacks tonight have really shown the arm strength, but it's well, kind of cost them. A little too much strength. Well, the problem is now, you, it's fourth down. You got a punt, and the clock stopped. Just run the ball. 53 seconds left here in this game. <laughs> Harlan Page coming in to punt this one away for the Cobras. They were looking for the big play and couldn't get it. They lead 14 to 6. Get it out of there. So, <clears throat> big names to look at right now will be long snapper Steve Anthony and punter Harlan Page. They're going to need a good snap and a good kick. Anthony, the wide receiver, also the long snapper for the Cleveland Cobras. 53 seconds left here in this game. As the Rough Riders will overload their left side. Decent snap. They'll get it away. Oh, Harlan Page with a nice punt. Absolutely boom. It'll be fielded at the 40-yard line. Drop picked up again by the Rough Riders. They'll bring it out to the 45-yard line and brought down at the 47. That's where the Rough Riders will take over. With 42 seconds left in this game and no timeouts. And, oh. and there's going to be a roughing the kicker penalty on the Rough Riders. Talk about mis penalties and huge mistakes. Wow. And, and with 42 seconds left, it'll take two knees, coach, and that will... Hopefully end it tonight for the Cobras. Yeah, They'll go 1-0 in the league. Yeah, because whether it's running in or, or uh, roughing... It's still it's still five yards, and they had only three to go or four to go. So that should be a well. Now they're missing. More, now they're running it back. Yeah, not real sure what's going on here, but great snap, great kick. As the officials now mark off the penalty, and indeed that will be enough for a Cleveland Cobras first down, and That's that should 15. wrap this one up. Yep, they'll get out of week one with what looks like a 14-6 win over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. Rough Riders coming in and making a good showing for themselves. They make the trip from where we came from, Youngstown. And victory formation for the Cobras as Dave Thompson will take the knee with 38 seconds left here in this game. Mike Griffin and crew can be proud of the effort tonight. They will come up short. They will go 0-1 in league play. They'll be 0-2 overall this season. 20 seconds left here officially. And as Dave Thompson will take his time. And the Cobras will get the eight-point win over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. And if it is over as the clock runs down two zeros here in Lakewood. The Cleveland Cobras start off the 2023 Tri-Point Football League season with a 14-6 win over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. We're going to step aside for a break when we come back. We'll give you a scoring recap. We'll get on a couple of more sponsors, and we'll wrap it up for you from here at Garfield Stadium in Lakewood. You're listening to Cleveland Cobras football here on the iMedia One Network. During the fall and winter, grilling season never ends, and Gessler Propane is your local supplier that makes sure you get your hard-earned money's worth. Why go to gas exchanges to pay higher prices for tanks not filled to capacity? Gessler Propane makes sure you're prepared for year-round grilling with 100% filled tanks at a reasonable cost. See Bob Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday, 9 to 3, at Gessler Propane, 702 Youngstown Poland Road, Struthers, or call 330-755-9119. Gessler Propane, they got 
gas. Golf in the Mahoning Valley starts at Mill Creek Golf Course. Come out to the 36 beautiful hole design course by Donald Ross, and golf lessons are available by calling the team shop at 330-740-7112. Don't forget about family fun nights on Friday and Saturday evenings, a family of four with cart for only $25. Or visit the Wick Recreation Area and the lighted par 3 course. Book your tee time today at 330-740-7112 or online at millcreekmetroparks.org. Located in Applewood Estates in Boardman Township, the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club offers a pleasant family environment. Choose a membership that meets your needs and enjoy a relaxing venue that includes not only swimming for the family, but also youth activities such as competitive swimming, tennis, and more. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere all summer long with the staff and members of the Applewood Swim and Tennis Club. For more information, go to applewoodswimandtennis.com or call 330-953-2833. Hi, it's Mark Means, host of By All Means, Tuesdays at 5, right here on Western Reserve Radio, WRDB, The Scourge. Back here in Lakewood one last time as we wrap it up here in week one of the Tri-Point Football League. The Cleveland Cobras with a 14-6 win over the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders. Again, we want to thank some of our sponsors here for the Cleveland Cobras, including Smoky Seafood Barbecue, <laughs> sexy, sophisticated, and savory. Two one six six three two one five zero six. Give them a call. Two one six six three two one five zero six. Also, want to thank Gibson Elite Athletics. Gibson Elite Athletics dot com. Give them a call for more information. Also, we want to thank Erica Marie Financials for bookkeeping services. And more. They are now accepting clients. Go to Eric Mar- ericamariefinancials.com or call 330-785-5432. And, of course, I want to thank all of our sponsors here on Western Reserve Radio, including the Gessler Propane Studio. So, with that, we take a look at the scoring recap here. No scoring in the second half, but first and second quarter, we're kind of fun here in week one as Harlan Page would reser- re- return a 46-yard Fumble for a touchdown. That would be on a Robert Little John sack and strip. That would put the, the Cleveland Cobras up by a score of seven to nothing. In the second quarter, Keyshawn, Keyshawn Bacote would get a nine-yard reception from Dave Slap Thompson to put the Cobras up by a score of fourteen to nothing. And the Mahoning Valley Rough Riders they would get on the board on a block punt. They would take it fifty-five yards to the end zone. They would not convert on the extra point. And that's where our score would remain from there on in. The Cobras get the 14-6 to win. And, Coach, we talked about first-week mistakes, maybe some jitters, maybe just, you know, some live-fire execution. We saw that tonight. But on both sides of the fall, we, ball, we saw some great athletes tonight. They did a really good job with the effort, but they've got to clean up the execution a little bit. Well, right off the bat, they have to clean up their special teams. Their special teams did not play well tonight, and that, I believe that hurt them. Um, but, again, mistakes, simple things, that'll come. Um, you know, the jitters, you're finally getting into the season, and, you know, it'll work itself out. They'll get better. Uh, we don't know who was not here injury-wise and stuff, so um, they'll be fine. They'll get better, and everything will do real well with them. Absolutely, both teams. And for Jared, you know, again, we talked about the changeover in rosters. You and I have seen that. And maybe that's a part of it, too, is just a lot of players here new to the offense. Again, some familiar faces from 2022, but it's just going to take a little bit of time to get those gears running like a, like a well-oiled clock. Yeah, they got to get used to playing together. they got to get one wound with one another, get used to the offense, like you said, Jim, and get that chemistry building. And it all starts here in week one, and we'll see that chemistry build as the season goes on. And like Coach said, they'll improve in all aspects, especially with special teams and their offense. Yeah, and like we used to tell Coach Noble, hey, you know what, the defense is ahead of the offense all the time. Always. We know that. Yep. You know, there's not as much, uh, I guess, I don't want to say execution, but there's not as much, uh, oh, what, what would you call it, Coach? Just, uh, you know, hey, well, you, you know with, fine with, mechanics. Yes, I mean, so well, it's a little bit different. I mean, I, and, and we, we laugh about it when we say get quarterback. But, again, defensive backs have to work together. But your offensive – or, excuse me, your defensive line and linebackers, your main goal is to get after the quarterback, get after the running back so you read your keys. Offensively, it's a little bit more 
Uh, it's a little different because you, the, your offensive line's got to make uh, blocking calls. Your back's got to learn to step up. And obviously their timing was off. So both teams will get better. It's just more practice. Um, they, have to, they have to practice more, and that's what makes you perfect. For next week, the Mahoning, or Mahoning Valley Rough Riders will take on the Ohio Gladiators. That game will be played at Walsh University in Canton. And for us, it will be the Steel City Bobcats making their way to Cleveland. And a nice Cleveland-Pittsburgh matchup here in Week 2. 6.50 airtime, 7 o'clock kickoff here on Western Reserve Radio. So for the coach, Bob Gessler, for Jared Minecourt, making his way from the ice to the gridiron. And for Dave Ferris, I am Jim Craven. Thanks for joining us again here on Western Reserve Radio. Make sure you tune in this week on Tuesday for By All Means with Mark Means from 5 to 6 on Tuesday, Saturday mornings. It's Saturday morning sports page with Pat Lucia and Dave Clark. Again, thanks for joining us tonight here in week one of the TriPoint Football League, and we hope to hear and see you next week here, Saturday, in Lakewood. Have a good night, everybody. We thank you for joining us for the special presentation of Western Reserve Radio. And we now return to our regularly scheduled programming.